and gentlemen it is day number two of the crux cup 2953 we have had an awesome weekend of racing and it is time for some speed i am joined once again by my awesome co-host red monster sc how you doing today man how you fe how you feeling after yesterday uh i'm feeling actually uh, yesterday was really awesome i really appreciated the amount of effort we got from the heavy and the open the aurora class a lot of uh, fantastic opportunities for uh great race times uh, but that goes into today. We're gonna be uh, we're gonna be having the Acrox, the AX2, and the AX3, which are gonna put down some of the best times we're gonna see. Yeah, definitely. I mean, we've seen some really awesome things yesterday. We got a chance to watch the Auroras, the Open, the Heavy, and we saw some very very impressive lap times. And we actually managed to get into a server, get some ships out, and get going even with 318. Yeah, that seems to be an optional feature of Star Citizen recently. Uh, but you know, <laughs> despite the technical issues, the, this is the nature of uh, running an event on uh, an alpha build. Uh, but you know, we we work through those challenges. Uh, none of us are strangers to the occasional workaround. So uh, I think overall, <laughs> yesterday we we did well. They launched to the Asian servers, which seem to have the best performance overall. And uh, yeah, we'll we'll see how things go today. Uh, so far, it looks like uh, stability is good for the servers, and uh, all of our racers have been able to get in. So, uh, thumbs up for that. And hopefully, we'll we'll see some clean runs and some of the fastest times. Now, there are several names out here that, if you paid any attention to racing, you're gonna know. You're gonna know, and it's because the A Crux, the AX2, and the AX3 classes, those are where the speed demons live, right? Yeah. <laughs> no, exactly. Um... One of the cool things, though, as well, is, you know, we had, you know, server scuffed and, and all those other things, but we also had a little bit of stream scuffage last night as well. Uh, we thought the qualifiers gave us everything we needed to, to get everything ready, but it was still a bit rough, but 
trying not to jinx it, Red. Everything's been working for a solid 50 minutes. So, I mean, hopefully, I mean, look, you're not stuttering. I'm not stuttering. Uh, we've got camera views. Hopefully they work. Um, I think it's going to be no fun. I've got the comment. Um, so, yeah, <laughs> let's go through quickly. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what happened yesterday. So, like I said, it was the Open, the uh, Heavy, and the uh, Aurora Division. Um, and we saw a lot of competition within them. And we got some some pretty awesome results. So let's let's start yeah. with the open division. Tell us what happened there. Okay, uh, so the open division, we actually had the Bacon Dragon with the uh, Anvil Arrow uh, coming in for first place. Uh, we had Prop Decoy uh, with the Defender, uh, Captain MD in the Gladius, and uh, uh, HVC Ospin Lay uh, with the Defender coming in fourth. Uh, we did have a Saber Raven place number fifth, personal favorite. Uh, yeah. <laughs> glad to see that uh, that representing. Uh, with Commander Tenna, uh, Levage with a Defender, Maiden Ariana coming in with 7th in the 400i uh, for that open class. And then we moved into the Heavy, uh, which included uh, some some the, the C2 Hercules. You want to talk about that group? Yeah, so we had both 1st and 2nd place of the Heavy Division was won by Team Punch Buggy. Now, because of the way that the system works, that basically means that they both come first and they both got 1st place prizes. So well done to Herbie and Australia. For, uh, for winning that one. The, the Heavy Division's kind of, you know, a, a viewer favorite. Uh, uh, it's, it's one of my favorites as well, because you just get to see crazy things uh, oh. flying around. But Those probably large my, ships. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Probably my highlight of the Heavy Division, though, uh, was Pit Viper in that Reclaimer, having a crash to desktop in their second lap. Being in the able middle to of a lap. Yeah, in the middle of a yes. lap, being able to recover inside the ship. Apparently, they only dropped about five kilometers in atmosphere. And so but they were able to save the lap. And it, I think it was only like two or three minutes slower than their first lap. So yeah, that was you know, absolutely the, the insane. Real, the real secret about the Reclaimer is since 318, they've been excessively buoyant. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so that was awesome but, to see, as well as uh, it was very awesome to see Euro Trucker, who actually had an explosion at the beginning of uh, the Heavy Division, was able yeah. to crawl all the way back up and get themselves into a team position of fifth place. So really, really good yes, job indeed. there. Yeah. Um, and then we move on to the Aurora Division, which is one of the more competitive divisions across the weekend. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll give that to you, Red. Yeah, so uh, in the Aurora division, we had Steve CC leading it up with the LX, uh, Chief Aroni uh, that came in with uh, also an LX, and uh, Bleach Boy, third place in the Aurora division with the Aurora CL. Uh, not to be left out, of course, we had uh, Patea, Van Del, uh, Loud Guns, Speedweed, and Kung Lee that were all uh, contributors in that Aurora division. Uh, you know, it's, it's, uh, it's one of the earlier ships you'll get, and it's great to see it out on the track. Yeah, it is. Uh, it, was, it, it was a very fun day overall. Congratulations to those winners, especially for those prizes that a lot of you would have seen just a little bit earlier as those guys won a ton of awesome things. So very, very fun start to the weekend. And I do like it. I think this is the first time that we've actually had like a weekend for the Crocs Cup. And I do like this format, having these two days getting, gets me more excited for, for day two um, because... We have some pretty crazy things going on today. The A Crocs, Crocs 2, Crocs 3. It is very fast. It is incredibly competitive. And we have some of the most competitive races we've seen in the Star Citizen community here today. Absolutely. Great yeah. names in the list. Great names in the list. So let's check them out. Let's go check out some racer profiles. See who you guys can expect to see today over on the division. So we're going to be starting off with the A Crux division. Now remember, this is all Heralds. You can only use a Herald in this division because it is by far the fastest vehicle for this type of race. And we're starting with someone who you guys will probably know, Data Machine. So they have a PB of this track of three minutes and four seconds, which is incredibly fast. And you're going to see that sort of number is going to come up around the three minute and five second mark today, uh, even in regular laps. These guys are, are incredibly quick. Uh, so, uh, yeah, Red, go ahead. Yeah, uh, so Data Machine uh, got into racing because uh, he was looking for people to fly with after bought uh, his first stick and found the XGR crew and been hooked ever since. Uh, going to do on release uh, anything and everything on the lawful side of the verse. You know, a lot of folks stick on that, uh, stick on the green side, not dipping into red. Uh, claims to fame is the 2952 A Crux champion. So, uh, a reigning champion out there 
Uh, they are XGR formation flight captain and the Stanton 7 finisher. Uh, definitely involved in the racing community. Makes sense. They're in the uh, the Acrux class here. Uh, and also, uh, some of the best experiences uh, they've had in Star Citizen have come from racing and from the people they've met through it. Had a blast trading paint with you all. So, thank you very much, Data Machine. Yeah, thank you very much. All right, let's have a look at the next race. So, we've got. So, coming up next, we've got Splen Shepard from Team Splen. Lots of people consider the best racer in Star Citizen, but today is where he's got to prove himself. PB of 3 minutes, 4 seconds, 0.25 with number one world record on SCR.GG. That could change today. We have seen some incredibly fast times, especially in the open and heavy division that have been, you know, in those divisions, world record attempts for sure. So what got spun into racing, being fast enough to outrun my parents when I blew things up as a child, the A-Wing, Terminal Velocity, Hellbender, and Diddy Kong Racing. I love Diddy Kong Racing with a passion that is my favorite childhood game yep uh and honestly you know it's, uh it's a great inspiration obviously a lot of folks uh get involved in gaming because of parental issues yep <laughs> uh well, we got uh claim the fame there uh yes so uh the first place in a lot of races dating back to 2951 including invictus ls3 uh ttm and the xgr races and anything to, to add i just saying never give up Trust your instincts. Splint is a name you'll see out there a lot. And uh, we, we saw in the qualifiers, uh, Splint had a couple of crashes during the event, uh, but today's the day that it matters. So we'll hopefully see uh, hopefully see some clean runs and some fast times. Do we think we're gonna get less than, uh, shorter than three minutes, four seconds? It'll be time. Might see that. It'll be It'll incredibly time. Next up, we've got Tint. Now, Tint actually was also participating today in the System 7. Had a chance to watch them uh, racing around. We love to see these racers who like to do a little bit of everything. Uh, we also saw Splen just previously as well. So, yeah, here we go. We have Tint with a PB of 3 minutes, 3 seconds, 350 milliseconds. Incredibly quick, once again. Very, very, very quick. Um, and you can already see between a couple of these incredibly fast races, just how small of a difference these lap times can be. So they got started in racing as a way to just try and improve their flight skills. I started trading times with another player from Frontier Consolidated, and that little bit of competition was all that it took to get me hooked. I fully understand that. The second that Diplomat released SCR.GG, I just like, everyone was competition. I need to get the better times. What? So I fully yeah. understand. What a fantastic resource for the community, you know, to get people involved. I know I was, uh, I put in some times with the uh, uh, the, the Snake Pit uh, with Saber Raven. Not exactly the fastest ship to do it, but it, it was great seeing the, the competition there, the times, uh, being able to go back and watch the videos from the racer's perspective and see what lines they're taking through the track. I mean, trying to, trying to replicate that yourself. Yeah, uh, yeah. For Tim. Uh, doing on release, probably drinking an inadvisable number of energy drinks so I can play the game for 48 hours straight. Uh, those are rookie numbers, Tint. Uh, claim of fame is <laughs> hoping to add Crux Cup uh, winner to the list, so we'll we'll see that. And uh, the community here is the coolest in gaming, so thanks for being awesome. Tint, thanks for your support. And we do see three minutes, three seconds, so we, we can definitely get a sub three, four. Yeah, definitely. Let's see where we can push it. All right, I just realized we got 39 races to go through, so <laughs> let's uh, let's try uh, maybe a little bit faster. I did not realize, I just realized then. All right, so we got oh Fed or Fedicol from Frontier Consolidated as well. Um, PB of three minutes and 12 seconds, quite fast. Uh, race on Tank Bank, hosted by Frontier Consolidated. I won that race and got an STV as a reward. And the thrill of drifting in a bowl in Nova compelled me to ask my org's race team leader how to get into a racing team. And you are here, so it's awesome to see you here and, uh, and competing today. Hopefully we see a new personal best from Fed. Yeah. Let's move on. So next up, we have Shaq Fu or Shaq Nu, another viewer favorite, one of the biggest competitors in Star Citizen. Will try to beat your PBs, whatever it is, does not care. Uh, what got them into racing is Googling and founding, uh, finding XGR, which is, you know, XGR does need a massive shout out in what they've done with the racing community. It's been really, really cool to see them be able to grow the racing community, particularly the uh, ship racing. Yeah, indeed, and a lot of great advice there. They've got their own community and Discord. If you're looking at getting into racing, these are the folks to pay attention to. And the amount of work that XGR has done for the community of racing is uh, not to be understated. 
So, uh, Shaq Fu with oh, the uh, <laughs> nine minute. Uh, yeah, uh, that's fine. Uh, we've got Red Wolf Wood uh, from Cordado Racing. Uh, that's got a personal best three minutes, nine seconds in the Acrex class class and uh, always enjoyed racing since I was young and Star Citizen. Black Maze and XGR got me racing in the verse. I now participate in the Santa Cup, Crux Cup, and other racing events. So, fantastic work there. Yeah. Uh, moving on again. So we've got Strazik, another big name in the racing community with a 3 minutes 12 seconds PB. Uh, and they're going to play the game on release. I mean, is there anything... I mean, yeah, I think we're all going to be doing that. I hope, at least. At the very I really least. hope. Yeah. Yes. That, that that level of optimism has me inspired. Yeah. <laughs> Next up is Renless Malik uh, from the BSI Racing Tachyons. Uh, and, yeah, got him into racing uh, for the Stanton and System 7. So, Stanton 7, System 7. Uh, great events. Uh, I believe that's the Atmo Esports group as well. Yeah. Yeah, very familiar uh, with Renless. Had the opportunities with racing with them quite a few times in the System 7, and they are going to be someone scary on the field. Indeed. And we've got Furious Banter uh, from Goober Inc. Uh, that got into pod racing from, in Leisureplex, actually. Uh, going to do on release is just eat his hat. Oh, <laughs> oh. I, 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 gotta say, I mean, we're going to hold them to that. We're going to have to see the video of that. Yeah, picks or it didn't happen. Very much. Uh, no personal best time set yet. But yeah, we'll, no. So we'll they're definitely going to be watching them today. See what they can see what they can pull up. Um, <laughs> yeah. So we're now moving away from the Acrox division into the Acrox Two. So similar to how you got Formula One and, and, and Formula Two and Formula Three and so on, we have a similar thing here. Um, so we have Bill Boy. They're going to be using the P72 Archimedes. This is part of the Shaq New fan club uh, who had an absolutely amazing showing during the qualifiers last week and definitely gave Shaq New himself a run for his money. So that's going to be interesting. So yeah, they're into the XGR community. Obviously, big fans of Shaq New. And they've been able to get a 337.57 in the P72. Can, can we buy a, a, a Splen fan club? I, I feel like Shaq New's got his own. We, we need Splen represented too. Yeah, I'm going uh, to Next up is... Next up is playing Fox. Uh, got uh, into racing through Splendstream and the XGR community mainly. Uh, found out about racing on Reddit. Uh, you know, uh, for those of us who still use Reddit, that is, uh, I, I would say there's a great star citizen the community there as well. Uh, what we do on release, uh, yeah, a little optimism there, if that happens. And uh, what color are the unicorns? That's a very, very interesting question there, Fox. Are they going to tell us? I don't us, know or? if we've got the answer. Yeah, I don't know if we've got the answer. <laughs> Uh, so once again, a very quickly important thing about the Shaq New Fan Club is both teammates of Shaq New Fan Club, Playing Fox and Bill Boy, were within like hundredths of a second of each other uh, with their laps last week. So these are the guys to watch in uh, Acrox 2. And you're going to see a lot of that fractions of a second between yeah. race times. Uh, here we've got S uh, Epic Wink from SCA Spicy Meatballs team. Uh, got into racing through the Southern Cross Alliance and uh, going to be hanging out with the Southern Cross Alliance on release. So, yeah, Southern gonna Cross gonna Alliance. Yeah, Southern Cross Alliance we're big, big fans of. They are the majority organizers of this whole event. So, as always, massive shouts out, shout outs to SCA as well as ANZIA. Yep, indeed. Uh, coming up, we have Ninjetti uh, from P3 Racing and uh, coming in the P72 Archimedes at 3 minutes 39 seconds. 0.961 got into racing uh, while flying uh, six degrees of freedom in a huge, partly realistic and partly arcadey space environment, and the flight model. So, yeah, getting that feeling of racing, it's it's phenomenal. Yeah. Moving on, next up we have Sanji Sanji Summer, another racer where I, I, I have had the privilege of racing with in the System Seven. Absolutely phenomenal racer. Also in the P72 Archimedes with a PB of 4 minutes and 11 seconds. And they just want to go fast, which makes a lot of sense. But, uh, I mean, look at those claims to fame. 2950 and 2953 Daymar rally first place, as well as crushed the Grey Cat Social as well. So, you, you know, this is an experience right now. You've got to also recognize that Operation Pitchfork. I think many people underestimate the seriousness of this operation. Is that the to release. Is that the one where it's like they want to take over a system right on release? Is that the one? Uh, I think Operation Pitchfork is the effort to take over the Vanduul home system. Right. Just before release, when everything's about to get wiped, we're gonna we're gonna just throw everything we can at it. And uh, yeah, Operation Pitchfork. All right. Be ready. Everyone, make sure you join that one. 
Next up, we have Atrix from Ghost Corporation. Another corporation that I'm seeing more and more often in a lot of these racing events. Uh, they are also running the P72. Now, they don't have a PB here, but last week, I do believe we saw them uh, get their qualifying time. So I think their PB was 4 uh, four minutes, 0.704. So quite fast. They managed to get 10 laps in last week. So definitely a contender going out for there. I'm very happy they qualified and they're able to attend today. So going to be awesome. Let's, uh, let's keep going. Okay. I'll give you the next one, Red. Coming up next is Canadian Maverick from Team SCA Spicy, Spicy Meatballs. I uh, got into racing through Echo. Uh, Echo Bit, uh, one of the organizers here uh, for the Crux Cup. Uh, doing on release is going to start my flight around the verse with my 350R and Banu Merchantman. If the Banu Merchantman is out, a uh, personal sore spot. <laughs> uh, he is the fastest 350R pilot. Uh, that is the claim to fame. And yep. of course, uh, coming in the AX2 class with that 350R. And good luck, have fun, and remember, it's a game. Thank you, Canadian Maverick. Yeah, someone who has an absolute, just like immense skill with that ship. Next up, we Indeed. have the missile from Blue Star IT. Uh, they're going to be using the M50 in AX2. Now, I don't believe I have a time for them uh, from last week. I do, actually. Sorry. Yes, I do. Uh, so they managed to get a 4 minutes and 11 seconds during qualifiers last week to make it in. Uh, so they were able to qualify. They managed to get 7 laps in. I believe they had a couple of collisions, so hopefully looking to play it a little bit more safe today and get those times in, try to get that first three positions. Born into a motorsports family, their father has been pit crewing for an old friend's racing team since before they were born. Racing was in their blood from day one. That is a very interesting story. I'd love to hear more about that. That is a fantastic connection to the racing community. Uh, and hopefully, yeah, we'll get some clean runs from the missile. Uh, I see seven laps completed last week mm -hmm. uh, with the qualifiers, and hopefully clean runs, uh, good refueling. Coming up, Admiral Noble, uh, Noble 737 from CIG, representing Cloud Imperium Games uh, with the 350R from the AX2 class. Uh, I got into racing uh, because I was asked to join the Babbage Bash by the community team and had tons of fun. So obviously getting getting pulled in as a community assignment at CIG, but, uh, but getting hooked along the way. Yeah, it was really awesome to to be able to have someone from CIG join the event and qualify because they did have to qualify last week and they did manage to qualify with a four minutes and twenty seconds, uh, which might not be the fastest that we've seen in the AX2, but they were managed. They also managed to get ten laps in, so they didn't really have many issues. They were able to be consistent and they got a pretty solid finishing time. Yeah, I um, do think they had a collision early, but did yeah. pull out uh, with with a good clean run after that. So yeah, exactly. So. We'll be, we'll be watching you, Noble, 100%. Next up, we have Dunk from the Rocket Boys. That is a fantastic name, Dunk. Big fan of that one. Um, so, yeah, what got them up into racing was XGR. Once again, we're going to see XGR pop up a lot. They are a big name in the ship racing community. They're going to be using the P72. Three minutes and 56 second PB. Not too bad. Puts them up in that sort of mid-range spot. So if they can use that to their advantage and, uh, you know, hopefully not have too many pit stops, they're going to be in a good spot. Uh, they were once featured on a video about racing posted to Morphologist's channel. Please don't pay attention to my racing lines, though. Uh, <laughs> well, at least you'll have Morphologist sh uh, shouting out for you and, and uh, rooting for you. Yeah, well, great opportunity there. Coming up next, uh, we have the Very Average Gamer from Salty Dogs Racing, uh, coming with a 350R in the AX2 class. Uh, got into the racing based on org meme bets. Now, <laughs> I will say there is, there, is a, uh, there is a huge opportunity for just challenges within the game, uh, doing stupid stuff. I, I, many events like this were born out of just, hey, can you do it? Uh, maybe, maybe, maybe not, maybe, we'll see. Yeah, unfortunately, I don't think we will be seeing Very Average Gamer today, but we do appreciate the sign-up. Hopefully, next year, if we don't have to push the race back uh, because of 318, then uh, we'll be able to get you in for that one. So, uh, thank you. Next up, we have Broccoli Rob. Broccoli Rob in the P72 Archimedes. Another one with no PB and unfortunately did not attend uh, qualifiers last week, but... What got them into racing is that it's competitive in the way that only thing holding you back is yourself. Can definitely agree with that. There is something to be said about, you know, sort of what I was saying before, about just spamming time trials and constantly trying to improve yourself, you know? Yeah. 
Absolutely. Uh, just working through some cameras on the back end here. Yeah, no Scuttle from the Rocket Boys uh, with the P72 Archimedes uh, with the AX2 class. No personal best there either. Uh, but got into racing uh, because pledged in the game in 2015 with the hopes of getting into racing. Didn't find the racing scene until recently with SCR uh, and the XGR group. Uh, claims the fame is that they flew terribly in a morphologist video in the convention. <laughs> was fun. Turn uh, one deaths on all of relevant tracks. Yeah. Turn one deaths. Uh, that that is a big struggle. You get in and you just you, you're pushing it, right? Yeah. So we did have another member of CRG sign up, but unfortunately they were unable to attend last week. So Sunny, so once again, appreciate you signing up. They signed up for the Damar Rally this year, uh, which uh, I believe they actually did a really good job. I think they were in the truck division uh, and they managed to get some pretty decent times. Uh, they decided to spend more time racing with the cool racing community. I mean, by far, we are the best community in Star Citizen. I'm not biased at all, but can confirm that racing is the most fun thing to do in Star Citizen. <laughs> Yeah, debatable, but racing <laughs> is one of the... <laughs> I've got to represent my industrial orgs, okay? Uh, it, industry is just racing on a different level, you know? Yeah, okay. I, I guess everything's racing if you really pay attention. <laughs> uh, Smithy Pie from Omega Aerosports uh, with the Mustang Omega. Uh, 4 minutes, 27 seconds. This is one of those exclusive hardware lock ships that, uh, that you can only get uh, with a specific purchases now. Uh, glad to see the Mustang Omega represented there. Uh, got into racing through the stunt race FX on the Super NES, Super Nintendo Entertainment System. And uh, on release, is going to retire from their job. I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> this is also our first, uh, first team member from the AX3 class. Putting in a PB that would qualify them for AX2, theoretically. So uh, very, very, very fast. Yes, indeed. Next up, we have NeoJet, another big, well-rounded racer. They joined through XGR. We've seen them a ton, though, from Sire Alpha, uh, and they're going to run really fast on their uh, on the release. They managed to get a 426.95 PB and a Mustang uh, Omega, and I believe last week they were able to pull off a 428. So very, very close to their PB in, you know, the official yeah. one. And some fantastic claims to fame. Third in the 2952 Crux Cup Aurora class. First in the 2952 Grey Cat Social. Third in the 2953 Damar Rally Truck Division. And the winner of the TTM Winter Ground 2953. Uh, the first winner of Cup Points on the Stanton Cup of XGR. So NeoJet, very involved in the racing community. Yeah, very much so. And once again, just a very, very good performer, right? Next up, we have Quelsa from Team Cursus. They're also in the AX3. They were using the Razer LX, which is definitely aesthetically one of my favorite racing vehicles in the entire game. They came through from the XGR community, watching Black Maze and Osashes. I mean, once again, we're going to see those names pop up a lot over the course of the day. So hopefully we can uh, we can do some great job today, Quelsa. Uh, you managed to get a 432 last week. Yeah, and if you want to see the Miss Grazer really put through its paces, Quelsar is the one to watch. Uh, we've got Zolnar with T-Girls Gaming uh, with the Razer LX as well. The technical aspects of turning, tuning in Gran Turismo. Uh, spent hours working to fine-tune settings for specific tracks, finding the right balance between maximizing speed while being able to maintain a handle on the car. So, very involved in other racing sims, uh, bringing it over to Star Citizen uh, for the additional challenge of six degrees of freedom, uh, all within an alpha environment. Yeah, and a very... Very awesome uh, little ending from them there. Never give up on your goals, no matter the circumstances. Find a group to help support you, and you can achieve just about anything you desire. That's awesome. I like that. That's really cool. Yeah. And you know what? I think a very strong reflection on the Star Citizen community. Yeah. Uh, Mr. Dreipner uh, coming in with the Razer LX and the AS3 class. Uh, did we have a time from Dreipner last week? I think we did have participation. I, I'm not seeing it for sure. Uh, but, I, I, uh, yeah, I believe we did have a qualifying time from Dreipner, but it, the the little race, the bot race results thing that we're working on, uh, I think uh, doesn't have that at the moment. But uh, they, they are definitely participating today because we have a racer cam from them, so I can guarantee you they qualified. <laughs> yeah, and they started with Need for Speed Evolved uh, to Forza Motorsports, and then Spaceships entered the scene. So. Yeah. And bless Papa Roberts. Yes, indeed, Dreipner. <laughs> Next up, we've got X Prime from Merc Core Racing Team. 
AX3 with the Razer LX. They got into a racing through Arena Commander. That's another one of the big things that we saw a lot yesterday is we have a lot of racers who come through Arena Commander and just, it's a obviously really easy to just keep on resetting and, and going for those races. So I'm really excited yeah. for the for the Arena Commander redo. Um, in 29.48, they flew in the Crux Cup for the first time and took third place in the Open finals so we have someone with a little bit of history in the cross cup here uh, i'd love to know what vehicle they they used uh that year yeah, moving from the open the ax3 correct mm -hmm. uh yeah. we've got canes from omega era sports the mustang gamma personal best of four minutes 37 seconds uh got into racing because it's echo's fault totally <laughs> irrefutably echo's fault uh, you talk about the bad influences we have in the community here echo bit is at the top yeah um i will just let everyone know we are getting very close to the formation lap starting so it's not going to be much too longer guys before we get started we have a keisha also from t girls gaming they're also running the razor lx pb of four minutes and 47 seconds they've always loved the racing genre more so the sci-fi side they played xg2 and 3 as a child and did a bit of competitive racing through free space 2 open that's another thing to be talked about a little bit is that there's a lot of these uh sci-fi racing communities especially from uh, places like Elite Dangerous, who have come over to the Star Citizen community and been giving it a go, and have been absolutely crushing. Absolutely. And adding in there at the end, Keisha with the 07. 07 is the U. A best of luck on today's track. Yeah. Next up, we got Spratty from Cobro Force, which is a great name of instead of Cobra Force. I love it. Uh, also in the Razor LX PB of 5 minutes and 13 seconds. Uh, they're just starting racing now. So uh, this may be their very first event that they're running in. Um, and they're going to pinch themselves on release of Star Citizen. I think we all are. There's been a very, this common theme of like, it's out? What? Crazy. Disbelief is, uh, will, will be rampant. Uh, we got Is T Gaming uh, with uh, Team AU79 Nova uh, running in the Misk Razor. Uh, no personal best there. Uh, got into racing because it's fun. Uh, doing on the release. It's playing the game. Claims to fame. None. And on uh, anything else to add, just do it. <laughs> Getting close to the last few. We've got Stone Rider from Aerial Racing Team in the AX3. Uh, another racer who I believe, unfortunately, has not qualified. But they're a racer since forever. They love IRL Motorsports with Motocross on top. Awesome. Love to see it. And they love science fiction and science alone. And so here you are. Awesome. We love to see it. Thank you for, for joining in the event. All right. Moving on, we have... Uh, Cuck Monster from Thundercats Racing Team with a Misk Razor. Uh, I got into racing uh, because I love racing since I was a child. Uh, I enjoy the uh, tracks around the verse and adding. Uh, I just hope the rides have respect in races. So uh, <laughs> get out there. Uh, you know, we, we might see some paint scratch. We might see some collisions. Hopefully it's a clean run. But of course, our officiating team is going to keep us in line. Next uh, up, we Logar have Logar. Yeah, next up, we have Logar from Thundercats Racing Team. Uh, yeah, they've been loving Arena Commander racetracks in 318 hype, which is going to be 319 is going to be even cooler for you. And we've got Salem Frost from Sire Alpha Team and the Mustang Omega uh, getting into racing based on a friend telling you to race with them. So, uh, yeah, we got that covered with the Sire Team. Uh, and uh, engines on and burn the fuel. Yeah. Almost at the end, we have Kamak from The Cult, uh, or Ka Kamok, Kamok, there we go. Um, they are running the Mustang Gamma. They just want to go fast. The noble pursuit, if I've ever seen one. Yeah, and running the Kessel Run in seven parsecs, better than Han himself. <laughs> and lastly, we have Drift ACR from Prevail Gaming. They started their racing career on Gran Turismo. From there, they've always had a passion to go fast. Watching the release trailer for the M50, but them excited and interesting in Star Citizen Racing. That is one of the best, like, uh, trailers that they've had for a vehicle pretty much ever, I would say. Mm -hmm. And the claim to fame, uh, not yet determined. Hopefully, maybe Drift ACR is going to see one today. Yeah, so there we go. So those are the races that you're going to be seeing today. Now, some of those, unfortunately, did not uh, qualify uh, as, they, as they did not attend qualifiers or, or the practice labs. But always good to see all of these, you know, different members of the community and uh, what they bring to the whole thing. So that's who you're going to be looking at today. Who is everyone going to be rooting for? Who are you rooting for, Red? What? what who are you, you know most what? looking I, forward to today? 
I I I gotta say, uh, from that Acrox division, uh, the names to watch out for. You you got Tint who put in some fantastic times. You've got Shaq New and Splint, and these are racers. If you watched, you know they they've got Reddit posts, they've got YouTube videos of world record times that are always shaving fractions of a second. Now, not to be left out, we've got Red Wolf, Strazy. Uh, that, that Acrox division, I think we're going to see some fantastic times from today. Uh, and uh, uh, I think that's where the excitement's going to be. But uh, not to be left out with the AX2 or the AX3 divisions. Those are going to be uh, also uh, some fantastic opportunities for us. Yeah, for sure. I'm just double checking some cameras. We've had some people rejoin and, and leave and whatnot. As the formation lap has begun, ladies and gentlemen, we are... We are oh, that is... That it's was the okay. wrong button. It's a, it's a live production. <laughs> uh, but yeah, we've had some people rejoin and whatnot, so we're going to just quickly get them back in. But yeah, formation, formation life is starting, we can see. So right now, we are at Echo Bits Perspective, looking uh, through Kaplan Stadium. These guys are going to be now, coming Echo around Bit. for the formation lap. Yeah, now Echo Bit is going to be sitting on the finish line, recording track times, uh, lap completions, uh, putting in the reports. We do have... Uh, other uh, other race officiators uh, working at each of the different platforms, reporting on incidents, uh, reporting statuses uh, as things progress throughout the day. So, yeah. Speaking of those staff members, we have right here. We do, in fact, have uh, gentleman Jez, one of my favorite people in Australia, honestly. Uh, so he's going to have this sort of overview look, and you can see right there that look of uh, uh, Kaplan Stadium. Let's have just a really, really quick look at the track as they're doing the formation lap. So you can see Kaplan Stadium is where it all starts. Right now, they're going to be doing their formation lap between Milford and Kaplan. Once they get to that, it's an uphill battle to Providence, a right turn into Shimura, right turn into Milford, and then that really, really long straightaway into Kaplan. Uh, yes, Red, indeed. why don't you tell them what's actually happening today? Like, how are these guys winning? What is the format? Yeah, so the format is it's a one hour endurance race. It's the number of laps completed as well as the personal uh, times for those lap completions. So uh, the folks that are going to be doing the best are the ones who can do short pit stops. Uh, you are going to have to refuel with each of the each of the vehicles today. Uh, they pass through each of the platforms, get the time recorded and need a clean run in order to, to make that happen. Uh, a, a crash, a ship destruction, they are able to rejoin but it is going to be a costly oh, costly and expensive mistake to make up for costing six to seven minutes and a lot of times that's 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 a full two laps you potentially yeah. lose as you get into a collision yeah not to mention you know it is 318 right now there are issues these these races are well aware of all of the issues that could happen today there's been a couple of changes within the rule set as well to allow for you know respawning of of the same type of vehicle if refueling is not working uh, and, and, and a couple other things, just to make the races' lives a lot easier, but it is across the board, so no one is really put at a disadvantage there. And then here you go, we can see them all making their way through the formation lap, the wave of races. I think this might have actually been the first time since, well, I don't think we got this shot in qualifiers, I don't think we got this shot yesterday, but we finally got it, we can see the formation lap. I know, all the names in there, these are all folks who have qualified uh, between the last uh, couple of sessions, so... The Acrux, uh, they needed to get less than 3 minutes 30 seconds. The AX2, they needed to get less than 4 minutes 30 seconds. And the AX3, less than 5 minutes 30 seconds. Uh, we did see uh, a lot of qualifying times last week, and that was based on their best time. That's where they ended up in the grid. So those folks up front, obviously doing well in the qualifiers. We'll see if they can continue that performance uh, through the entire duration of the one hour today. Yeah, and remember, even if you are in, let's say, the AX2 or the AX3, which means you might have enough fuel, uh, you've you've got to do some stuff. Sorry, I just got distracted by green flag. We are on. The hour has begun. These races are going through, and we can already see right at the front there, Tint, Data Machine, Splen, Fetical. We're on our way. It's race it's, time. It's, it's on. It's on. Uh, the, the times are going now. It is official. Uh, we are going to be watching some of these perspectives throughout the race. And honestly, uh, right now, everything's bunched up. It's going to be difficult for them to see. We saw collisions last week, or yesterday, at the beginning of the race, uh, knocking out a couple of our heavies, the C2s. And, you know, we're, we're going to hopefully have a clean run right now. Some of that was caused by desync uh, just within the game. And we do already have X-Prime at the cap lane uh, with a starting incident, uh, our first shift destruction there. So we'll need to watch out for that. Uh, they, they will definitely... Oh, what a beautiful Ooh. shot, seeing all those. All yeah. those ships come through on that platform. 
got a nice Mustang Omega. These these platforms are deceptively narrow, right? Yeah. You, you, you have plenty of room to fit a larger ship, but there's a lot of obstructions. And they did update Cap 1 Circuit. Uh, the racetrack there did add some additional obstructions on the Cap 1 platform that racers are going to have to be aware of. Yeah, very much so. One of the uh, things that we also just saw, so we also saw Sanji Summer have a collision there. Um, now, remember, this the, the way that this works, they can go respawn and get another ship. That is 100% okay. That is within the rules of this. So we will see that happening every now and then. But obviously, if you're doing that, you're going to lose about 10 minutes or so. That's going to cost you a couple of laps. And so, obviously, you still want to avoid that as much as you can. Now, we're going to have yeah. this view available for most of the today's stream. This is Mr. Dreipner, uh, who is in, it looks like, the Razor. No, it's, yes. Yes? Yes. Yeah, that looks like a Razor. <laughs> Uh, the Misk Razor LX. Yeah, there we go. So this is Mr. Drive now in the Razor. So, uh, yeah, if, if we want to go back to this scene, we'll go back to this every now and then. We get a quite nice view of, look how close they're cutting these turns. Very, very close, especially when you're in decoupled. One wrong turn and you are gone skis. Yeah, and a lot of racers today are going to be uh, running with decoupled, but with their landing gear down. Uh, landing gear does help stabilize an atmosphere uh, a little bit. And uh, decoupled is a great way to preserve your speed as you're going through some of these turns. If you keep coupled, you'll have some counteracting forces that slow you down uh, to make those maneuvers. And and it could be costly. In the matter of an hour, uh, you, you could make up several uh, several seconds there, which could be the difference. You know, we've seen some of the personal best times within half a second of each other. Very much the difference uh, that some of these races are going to be looking after. Yes, yeah, so there we go. We can see Data Machine, Splen, and Tint still you know, most of the way through this lap already still in this little bunch as they're heading back inwards towards Kaplan. We're about two minutes 50 into the race, which means we should see very soon. And here we go. We've got Data Machine, Tint, and Splend coming around that corner, coming through Kaplan. Shaq knew not too far behind them, followed by Red Wolfwood and Fedekol. And we're going to get some times in a second, but we did also get Strazik with a ship destroyed. Luckily, they don't see any debris. So there we go. Yeah. Tint with a three minute and 10 second first lap, followed by Data Machine and Splen and Shaq New and Red Wolfwood. Everyone's and coming Red in Wolf. really quickly. And Fedekal. Fedekal. Yeah. All of these heralds checking in with fantastic times to start. Uh, hopefully, uh, three minutes, 10 seconds. We're not looking at personal bests yet. But yeah. as these racers really start to unload, uh, they, they get through that process. And uh, we've got our first on the AX2 Diplomat coming in with three minutes, 36, P72. Yeah, very, very fast there. I believe, let me see if I can see Diplomat's best time. Uh, Diplomat's best time last week was a 3.36 as well. It was a 3.36.4. So actually already beating the best time that they've had in the qualifiers. They may have a better PB, but at the very least, faster than last week. So a great shot there. Uh, yeah, very, very cool. And we can see all of these races coming through. Dollar Store Easy. We can see Bunk. I just love that name. It's just such a fantastic name. <laughs> <laughs> it rolls off the tongue. It does. Uh, we do see here the the uh, freighters actually uh, causing some obstructions on the track. Yep. Uh, did we clear this event with CIG? Uh, <laughs> with the Industries, and uh, you know, uh, we did actually see in the qualifiers we had uh, we had uh, the uh, Crusader security doing inspections on some of the support crew during the race. So, uh, and Redwood. Or, Red Wolf uh, Wood uh, crashed at Providence. Unfortunate there. Uh, we have seen a couple of incidents already. We'll need to keep an eye out for those. Uh, we've got, uh, it looks like a total of four. We also saw Strazik uh, destroyed on the Milford platform. So. Yeah, so there we go. We can see Billboy and Playing Fox just like in qualifiers. That team is right next to each other. They are probably going to be absolutely crushing it for the AX2, but they've obviously got competition. Diplomat did beat them by about seven seconds or so for that first lap. So they do have someone to fight. They do have someone to fight this week. Uh, uh, this is going to be worth watching because if either Billboy or Playing Fox are able to take that first place position, they both get the prize for first place. We have another ship destroyed from Epic Wink. They have crashed. No debris in the racing oh. lane, so it should be okay for the rest of the races. A bit rough for Epic Wink, though. That is at Kaplan Tunnel, so we'll, we'll need to watch out for these platforms. Uh, we've got Kaplan, Providence, Milford. Uh, no, nothing at Shimura yet. And uh, yesterday, as I had mentioned, the Shimura platform not claiming any victims. Uh, or the, the final platform not claiming any victims. That's what yeah. happened. So we'll see if you're going through Shimura right now. That that will be me. Uh, uh, that's, that's on me, guys. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, we do have a 
a ship destruction near Providence, uh, crash near storage areas, no debris. Uh, that was Fetical. Uh, so rejoining, obviously you're gonna wanna put in uh, a quick turnaround time. A lot of these racers are gonna have backup vehicles and uh, redundancy so that when they come back in, they don't have to wait out that ship timer uh, to, uh, to rejoin the race. Yeah, and we have had another thing happen. So Data Machine has pushed ahead into the lead with a three minutes and three seconds lap there, getting ahead of Tint. Tint and Splen and Shaq New crossing line not soon afterwards though. All of these guys are within about 10 seconds of each other. So plenty of opportunity for them to push forward, push back. It will come down to who takes the, you know, the, the the first refuel, who maybe gets a little bit lucky with refueling. We've seen that be an issue sometimes. But obviously... Yeah. Eliminate as many problems as you can by just going really, really fast. But this first, this front pack in the Acrox has been really interesting to watch so far. Uh, the the front pack has been great. Now we got the AX2 with the P72 Archimedes, but uh, we do have the AX3. We got some good times there. We have Smithy Pie in the Mustang Omega coming in with a four minutes forty seconds. We have Neo Jet also with the Mustang Omega four minutes forty four seconds. Zolner uh, coming four forty seven. Mr. Dreibner in the Razor LX uh, at 5.02, Quelsar with 5.04, so uh, pretty close on a, on a couple of those, but good to see the Omegas representing at 4.40, uh, and hopefully a, a three minutes, three seconds on the Acrux, definitely an aggressive time to put in. Yeah, and you guys would have seen just there, we had on screen, uh, well, first off, we have Fedical. Uh, they went destroyed, but they did have a ship collision, so we'll see what happens there. Sometimes, depending on the collision, you may want to actually go back and repair if you need to. It, it, it really depends. Uh, but what we did see is in the AX2 division, Diplomat has extended that lead that uh, he, he has against the Shaknu fan club to about nine seconds, uh, which in those vehicles can be quite a large distance. So we'll see if that maintains. Once again, they are going to have to refuel uh, uh, probably two times or so, uh, but we'll double check that as we go out through uh, throughout the day. But already lots of movement in between these first couple of, uh, of, uh, of pilots. Uh, and let's go back to this awesome view of, uh, of uh, Mr. Drapner here. And I think we are going to see a lot of those first positions switching around throughout the race as uh, racers hit clean lines. Uh, if we have collisions, one important thing is that you're going to be able to overtake other racers during the event as long as it's safe. Uh, you don't want to risk it and potentially uh, put yourself and another racer in danger. And we see the, the fuel consumption is going to be a problem on some of these smaller ships. We're looking here. Uh, it looks like about 30 to 40 percent of fuel mm. has already been consumed. We'll get maybe five to six laps uh, out of a full tank before they need to go and refuel. Yesterday, we saw up to five of the hangars non-functional, uh, requiring yeah. uh, racers to improvise. Uh, a lot of the uh, crew today will be able to go up to Port Olisar as a backup, but that is going to be a costly diversion. Uh, and unfortunately, that's not going to be an option for the folks running in the P-72 Archimedes. So we'll need to watch out for that. Uh, ensure that folks have uh, the, the appropriate fueling times. Uh, deciding when to take that fuel stop is going to be a concern because you can go in early uh, or if you end up going in later, you might have a problem with some of those refueling uh, hangers. Yeah, definitely. We have the front of the pack coming around again for lap number three. We have Data Machine still in the lead. Their last lap was a three minutes and three seconds, and they're about five seconds ahead of second place at the moment, which is Splen, followed by Tint and Shaknu. These guys are going incredibly fast today. They are breaking all of the records that we saw happen during the qualifiers. So that's been awesome to see. Apparently, Hangar 21 was reported as non-function before the race, so they're not going to be able to use that one. But that's okay. I think that so far is our first issue with a Hangar. And I'll take the it. First I'll one take we got, it. Yeah, first one we got reported. We're, we're 10 minutes into the race, so we'll have to see how that goes as additional racers try and make that. We did have an update. Sanji Sama uh, collided at a Providence platform. So a ship was not destroyed. Uh, but there was no debris there either. Debris is going to be a problem. Some of these obstructions, mm. as we go through some of these racer uh, perspectives, you may notice they're sending out active things that creates that virtual highlight so they can see a little bit more clearly uh, the obstructions they might face ahead of them. So, Yeah, a nice view of Noble there, being able to get through it. Now, yeah, I think Noble did have a collision early in the qualifiers last uh, last week, so it's good to see them be able to, you know, uh, pick it up a little bit and, and get some consistent laps in. We also just saw an explosion on screen there on the left oh side. 
Uh, we'll find out what happened there. Uh, it was a blue explosion. Yeah. I don't know if that necessarily matters, but we'll see. We'll probably get a race director comment of that any moment. Here it is. It, it that is Scuttled. scuttled. It, it claims its first victim, and uh, that one's on me, Scuttled. Apologize, but uh, but someone had to go through and uh, scratch some paint <laughs> at the Milford Tunnel. Yeah, very much so. Here we go. We can see Ayondo, Dolosaur, Easy, and Dirk coming through Kaplan getting their laps up. Where are we with Dolosaur Easy? Let's have a quick look. So we can see Dolosaur Easy has completed one lap so far. This will be their second in the Acrux division. So they've got they've, they've got a little bit of time to try to make things up there uh, and get themselves into those higher positions. One of the interesting things about if you do crash a little bit early, you do lose some laps, you do lose some time, but you do have a full tank. So it's not the full end of the world. It may mean you don't have to make an additional stop close to the end of the race, but we'll see how it works for Dolce Rizzi and we'll, we'll keep watching that as we go forwards. And we just had an update. Zolner from the Shimura platform was destroyed. There is debris, but it is out of the racing line. Those racers are going to be informed uh, of these type of obstructions. So uh, one thing to keep an eye out for. And yeah, you talk about that. If, if you're at the end of your fuel tank, uh, a lot of these racers, if they run into issues with the refueling system not working, they do go through, they abandon their ship, uh, they pull out a new one, uh, claim a, claim their backups, and that's that's one way to work around it. Crashing with a full tank, not only do you lose that time for rejoining the race, but you lose the opportunity for a potential quick pit stop. So, comboing in those times together, uh, if you can get a ship claim while getting a full tank of gas, uh, man, this is, the, the, the lines they're taking on this track are phenomenal. Yeah, it's very cool to watch them just be like, I want to minimize all the movement I'm making as much as possible. And we could we saw there, Mr. Drapner, just one turn straight. One turn straight. No maneuvering otherwise. Yeah. Every time you point that nose somewhere else, you lose a little bit of speed. And this is going to be a matter of, uh, I think, fractions of a second uh, within our, uh, our racing placements. So. Yeah, updating you once again, guys, on what is going on with everyone's times and whatnot so far. So in the Acrux division, Data Machine is about nine seconds or so, uh, about eight seconds or so ahead of Splen, who is one second ahead of Tint. So we've got a really big fight there between Tint and Splen, and Shaq knew about four seconds behind them as well. So that group is still very much really close together there. Then we've got Fedical, Diplomat, Hobo Sloth, oh, sorry, Billboy, Playing Fox, uh, Energy, Ninja D, Dunk, Atrix, Maverick, Novel, The Missile, Smithy, Neojet, Scuttled, Zolna, Quelsa, Dreipna, Pub Princess, or Akishab, uh, Drift ACR, Aondo, Dolosaur Easy, Red Wolfwood, X Prime, Saji Summer, Strazik, and Epic Wink. We got 30 races here today. That's a lot of people. Yeah. Now, we, we did a really great turnout, and just to call out there, Epic Wink did have a collision with Strazik at Rubber Ducky Pass, uh, given a warning for that. So. You're going to want to watch out. Some of this could be server desync, but you need to be very careful with that line. We saw a couple of racers yesterday uh, that lost the uh, HUD indicators for the ships ahead of them and uh, relying on those active pings. Uh, a lot of uh, a lot of potential issues to keep in mind. We're coming up on 14 minutes into the race. And we're going to see that uh, formation. Uh, those those placements start to spread out. And uh, oh, no. at this point, oh my. What timing for me to go and trap this what camera. A right at that uh you know you got to be careful and watch that now it doesn't look like they sustained any ship damage we'll we'll need to keep an eye out but we're coming up on that moment when these racers are going to have to start thinking about when to read yeah that was right coming uh just after kaplan as well i thought we'd get a really cool shot <laughs> just timed it perfectly i guess um so yeah um continuing on with a, a little bit of updates because i've been telling you you know there's these fights happening throughout the uh throughout the areas so we have in the ax2 division we've been watching diplomat billboy and playing fox billboy and playing fox from the shack new fan club they are now about 30 seconds behind Diplomat. This guy is putting in some incredibly fast times in this track, much, much faster than he had last week. I feel like maybe it was the only thing he was practicing this week, honestly. Uh, so that's oh. absolutely insane there. And then once again, Bill Boy and playing Fox still within about 10 seconds of each other. Sanji Sama, again, ship destroyed uh, at the Rubber Ducky Pass. Sanji Sama, this is a second incident. Uh, we got a warning there that uh, there is debris on the racing line uh, within Rubber Ducky so they're going to need to keep an eye out for that uh this is this is going to be some of those wild cards right we we talk about great racing times great performance from the racers that's within their control but things like uh, refueling problems 
uh, things like collisions with other racers or potential debris uh, on the track. Those are going to be the wild cards that really shake up the, uh, shake up the profiles here. And just seeing now, Fetical at Providence uh, has collided, a ship destroyed at Providence platform. No debris noted, so we're, we're clear there. But Fetical uh, coming up uh, near the top of the placement mm. there, number five right now. We'll have to see how quickly they're able to get back in and rejoin the race. Everyone else, uh, you know, working through that. So. Yeah, already 15 minutes in and already incredibly action-packed. This has been really awesome to see so far. Let's have a look at some other perspectives. You can see Missile going through this pass here. I really like this shot, being able to watch them watch them fly mm -hmm. on through. Let's see how our good friend here is doing. So watch this hydrogen. So we've been coming back to this view every now and then. So you can sort of see just how much the, uh, the, the hydrogen is coming down. We're probably at about 35-40% at the moment. So they've probably got maybe two more laps in them before they're going to be forced to do another uh, pit stop. And we did just get from Gentleman Jez, Hangar 8 is out. Hangar 8 is gone, skis. Uh, we had the same situation yesterday and the same situation on qualifiers. There's just something about Hangar 8 that it doesn't like us after a little bit. Yeah, uh, we've got Hangar 8 as well as Hangar 21 being uh, being non-functional prior to the race. So I'm going to, we're going to keep a track of uh, what what hangers are working, uh, which ones are not. Uh, we, we saw up to five of those hangers not functional last week or yesterday as well. Yep. So a lot of issues to keep an eye out for. And these racers are going to start using that pit stop. Do you take it early? Uh, try and get a hanger that works? Or are you the guinea pig uh, that goes to discover something isn't working? Uh, have to reclaim and uh, you know it's it's going to be a going to be a bit of a, a bit of a crapshoot sometimes yeah we were talking a bit about this yesterday right like do you do you like you've got to fight the servers sometimes you've got to fight the game do you take that risk to take an early pit stop even if it means you might be forced to do one later just to guarantee a couple of extra laps in and it's it really is a, a hard decision now I do want to say we just saw diplomat cross through for his fifth lap about 45 seconds ago and we've now just seen billboy pass through um so that is very much it's almost a difference of 50 seconds now um what do you think like like we saw some really really awesome performances from billboy and playing fox last weekend and they themselves are still quite close together but it just seems like they can't beat diplomat at the moment yeah diplomat's got a pretty sizable lead right now in the archimedes uh, ax2 class We'll need to see if that can continue through the whole uh, process as we get through. We're, we're only 20 minutes into this race, you know, 18 and a half, and we've got a lot of race time left. We're going to need to see how those pit stops, if they can come cleanly, uh, executing that way, and uh, how uh, collisions and other other factors that might play in. We just see uh, Ayondo uh, crashing at the Milford. Debris noted at the middle of the first strut, so uh, can going to need to watch out for that at the Milford platform. Uh, you know, these racers are going to have to watch that line. Yeah, very much so. It also looks like we're probably going to be approaching nighttime sometime soon. The end of this race, I think, will be at night. We can already see some of our racers turning their lights on. Now, for the most part, it doesn't make much of a difference in this track, but there are a couple of little bits. There's a couple of struts that jut out from, from these platforms that can be a little bit harder to see at night. Now, these racers have been doing practice. They've been slamming it a lot, so they will know where those are, but it might become just a little bit extra dangerous, probably in about 20 minutes' time. Yeah, and we have had multiple practice uh, events, multiple qualifier rounds. So, uh, and then Hangar 7, also now reporting as not functional. We need to keep an eye on that. Yep. Uh, we'll see more of these notices appear as uh, the racers you know, reach the end of their fuel tanks, have to go and refuel, and uh, discover this through trial and error. Um, you know, they, they've had multiple events. One of those practices, I was actually able to participate. I, I brought out the Mustang Omega, was putting in some respectable times. And I got to say, looking at the times these racers are putting in, I don't want to talk about it. <laughs> Awesome. All right, so some more updates for you guys. So this fight that's been happening in the front of the pack between Tint, Data Machine, Splend, and Shaknu. Tint has regained the lead, has gotten ahead by about eight seconds or so. So in the last two laps, they've been doing a lot of work and they've been able to get ahead. So we've got Tint, Data Machine, Splend, and then Shaknu. That's, that's where we're looking at well, at the moment, all within about 15 seconds now of each yes. other, particularly First Data Machine, Splend, and Shaknu. Very, very close. Number eight place Ninjetti actually just crashed the Shimura. Uh, the collision there, the ship is not destroyed, uh, but the other ship that they collided with has not yet been identified. We'll keep an okay. eye out for that. But 15 seconds uh, within the top four positions, all with that Herald. 
you know, yeah. we talk about uh, the other wild cards that are going to go in. As long as these folks are making uh, clean runs, we'll we'll see some fantastic results. Data Machine still has the fastest lap at three minutes three seconds, and we'll see if we can get the other racers. Tint, Splendid, Shack knew all about three minutes six, three minutes seven mark for their previous uh, fastest lap, and uh, we'll, we'll keep an eye on that throughout the race in order to make that happen. Yeah, not to mention that, but because they are within about three seconds of each other, the Data, Splen, and Shaq knew, um, if, if Data is able to get another one of those, you know, 303s, that's going to be huge. That, that that can push them a little bit further. If Splen or Shaq knew can push it a little bit further and also get something around the 303, 304, that'll equal that distance. So um, yeah. very, very competitive here. It is unsurprising that it is this competitive between these four races in particular because they are some of the best races that we see across all fields of Star Citizen. Yeah, and of course, not to be left out, the AX2 class. We've got Diplomat that's leading up. As, uh, five laps completed at 17.24. Billboy coming in about uh, 45 seconds behind. Uh, and Energy, uh, Ninjetti also there. Now we did see a collision from Ninjetti. Uh, we'll have to see how they can continue that racing line. What a great view here. Uh, seeing those close lines. You want to keep that directional indicator, uh, the point you're going, uh, aligned to your nose. To maintain as much speed as possible and that's the those clean lines clean maneuvers you see a little bit of roll a little bit of pitch coming out of that uh for the straight ahead so we'll keep an eye on that so that's the ax2 class uh ax3 uh we've got quelsar who is first place in the ax3 with a razor lx he's got four laps completed uh checking in most recently at 1845 uh behind that is smithy pie in the ax3 uh, mustang omega 1859. So about 15 seconds between those two. Uh, Dreipner, uh coming with the uh, Razor LX, uh, third place in the AX3 at uh, 1915. So uh, about another 15 or so seconds. We see a little bit more separation between those, the AX3 uh, with a wider variety of ships. And of course, uh, M50, we have uh, the missile uh, coming in 10th place for the AX2. Uh, yeah. That. And it looks like Sanji Sima, third crash, two crashes away from a free Sunday. <laughs> uh, crash at the Cap circuit. So Sanji Sima uh, really testing the cap capability of uh, that, that Oris and Hospital services. Yeah. Our uh, Acrop ships just came through with a couple of our lap number sevens. Looks like Tint has extended that lead a little bit. Now about nine seconds ahead of Data Machine. Data Machine, Splend, and Shaknu still all right on top of each other with Shaknu now only one second behind Splend right on their back so really really fast maneuverability from these guys i do just really want to quickly look look at the amount of fuel left in this ship right now it is bare bones i assume we're going to see a lap completion here hopefully followed by a pit stop and if not a pit stop a crash yeah. and a fresh ship one of the two well, and you, you perfect timing here you change that lineup and look at how busy that platform is there yeah this is everyone coming in to refuel because they're all running out of fuel at the same time we're gonna have to see that. Uh, we do have a ship destroyed, Dollar Store Easy, on Providence platform, no debris noted. Um, and uh, yeah, someone looks like someone's getting creative in one of those hangars. Yeah, I think uh, Ninja D may have e either collided <laughs> with something or we just seeing a little bit of desync. Either way, it looks hilarious. <laughs> and uh, we're gonna see uh, hopefully a couple of reports on uh, on hangars, uh, those folks making those refueling stops. And honestly, if you land in a hangar and it's not working, what? What do you? What goes through your mind there? Do you go for an alternative? Do you try and do a workaround, or do you just pull out that backup ship, claim your existing one, and uh, get back on the track? Yeah, we'll, we'll we'll see what happens. In fact, let's let's see. Let's watch a little bit of our view here. It looks. Oh, I actually love this. Already getting ready to open the ladder, open everything while you're waiting on the hangar to get ready. Like just being absolutely prepared for anything you have to do, even if you have to get out and get a fresh ship. Um, I do love it. I do, however, see them flying directly down into Crusader, so we actually might be looking at a fresh ship, possibly. Yeah. That hydrogen fuel, dangerously low. It's it's it gone, is empty. I don't it think gone. they have, and it. Yeah. This is this could be an uncontrolled, and we also have Quelsar uh, that was uh, reported as out of fuel at the pit stop. So uh, we see a couple of a uh, couple of racers who pushed it just a little too far. We'll have to see how they recover. Yeah, I mean, like I said, with the with the state of of sometimes refueling and whatnot, it's not the end of the world for them. But they will lose a couple of extra minutes because they're not able to refuel and they've got to instead 
you know, grab a fresh ship. Um, but also, luckily, these ships also tend to have pretty quick claim timers. So that's also a nice yeah. little thing on there. As we can see, Tint and Data Machine coming through right now. It looks like Data Machine has made that distance a little bit less than we saw last lap. They were at about a nine second lead Tint in the previous lap. So that is a three minutes and nine seconds for that last lap for Tint and a three minutes and five seconds for Data Machine. Whoa. Able to bridge that gap a little bit more into six seconds. Playing Fox ship destroyed at Shumura. And oh, no. uh, I do want to call out Epic Link, one of those that we saw with an early collision. Uh, currently last place total, but uh, completing a second lap for Epic Link there. Uh, maybe there's a Mr. Irrelevant prize. You want know, to talk about the, <laughs> the person drafted last in the NFL? Epic Link uh, putting in good qualifier times. Unfortunately, an early collision has got them in the back, uh, but we'll see if they can get that AXC for the Archimedes. Um, and let's see, did we miss any current we have? Uh, playing Fox with a ship destroyed. Well, start with an out of fuel. Uh, Dollar Store Easy was a ship destroyed at Providence platform. And yeah, we'll need to keep an eye out. Yeah. We see uh, Pub Princess just passing through that platform. Uh, appreciate the, uh, the, you got Tint. And uh, is that Bill Boy? A lot of folks uh, making very quick times. Tint. Ooh, Data eight. Machine spinning out there, possibly with a collision but it looks like they have recovered. Maybe not an explosion. So they're going to lose a lot of that lead that they just had, unfortunately. <laughs> and now they're going to be right with Splen and Shacknu, which speaking of, when they just completed their lap, Splen and Shacknu, they were within a second of each other. Splen with uh, hitting the, uh, the finishing line at 2614.009. Shacknu, 2614.980. They are really, really on top of each other. And In addition, we do have a little bit of an update on the uh, AX2. Dip Diplomat has crossed the finishing line for seven laps, but we then have Energy, then Ninjity, and then Playing Fox. Although you did just mention that we did have a, uh, a collision with Playing Fox. So Bill Boy may have gone in for a refueling. I'm not 100% sure what's, what's happened there because uh, they were sort of fighting with Diplomat, but we'll see what happens over the next couple of minutes. Yeah, and uh, coming up, we got the AX3. Smithy Pie currently in the lead with six laps completed and then Mustang Omega. Uh, we have Quelsar, we saw with the out of fuel notice. Uh, Razor LX, uh, Mr. Dreifner, uh with a Razor LX as well, uh, coming with five laps completed for those folks. Uh, and there we go. That's Mr. Dreifner <laughs> getting that, getting reset, and gonna go get another ship. See how many more laps they yeah, can put in. The and you gotta hope those platforms and those shuttles are working properly because this is costly time with three minute lap times, four and a half minute lap times. You're gonna be a whole lap behind at least uh, trying to get back to the platform, get your ship playing. Uh, it does look like Sanji Sama is on their way back to Capital Circuit to rejoin. Mm -hmm. uh, of course, HVC uh, Valerio will need to uh, cue them in, make sure that the racing track is clear uh, and safe for them to rejoin the rejoin the race. Yeah, I'd love to hear, as we can see, Tint crossing the uh, finishing line once again. This will be for their ninth lap. I am really curious how much fuel these these Heralds have at the moment. I haven't seen them go back for a refuel yet. Uh, it's possible they only have to maybe get one in across the whole race. We're at about the 30 minute mark now. So we'll probably see yeah. it soon. Um, but yeah, just after that, that spin out the data machine had, uh, look, they're much, much further back. We can see Splen and Shaq still right on top of each other, though it looks like possibly Splen might be going for a refueling right now, based on what we're seeing from this camera. Uh, so there we go. It might be about the time to refuel. You either go for another lap, you refuel. If you're on a roll, if you've had a bunch of really fast laps, it's probably worth it to go that a little bit extra, but uh, that's what we're going to see. So that, that distance between Shaq and Splendor is going to change a little bit over the next uh, couple of laps. And one thing to note, uh, Tint did set a new fastest lap time at 3 minutes 5 seconds. Uh, Data Machine currently holding the fastest lap total. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, as you mentioned, we saw a slight collision there. Uh, 3 minutes 20 seconds on the most recent lap. So uh, obviously costing a little bit of time as you make a collision. Fortunately, that was not a ship destroyed for Data Machine. But it's going to be a costly, costly delay. Definitely. I mean, I'm always glad to see stuff like that happen. It makes the race a little bit more interesting, but obviously my heart goes out to Data Machine, but at least they haven't lost a ton of time. They only lost about 20 seconds, maybe a little bit and less, like we, 15 seconds. We we do have Fedecol back on the track of the Acrox. Uh, that was an early collision. Fedecol is at the lap number seven. Hopefully, as we start to see some of these uh, folks at the front uh, going for pit stops, Fedecol might be able to recover some of that time. I uh, get a couple of additional laps in as they go through for that process. 
Yeah, lovely to hear. It looks like we do have, I believe Euro Trucker is out on the field there. So Euro Trucker is saying it appears all the Heralds just dove into the pits. So if that's correct, that's awesome. Um, shuttle is still working after minor heart attack from Chez, apparently. Uh, which, that's good to know, because some of these racers do have to run back to the spaceport. Good to know that the shuttle is still working, so and, very happy about and that. And you're not, you're not gonna get a manual transport back and no. forth. It, you, you're gonna rely on that shuttle. Everything else is, uh, no-fly zones, according to off. so. Yeah. Uh, we see X-Prime, Energy, uh, all coming in with those. A uh, couple of names we haven't seen necessarily at the top of the list but there we've got over 30 racers today actually right out 30 racers that have put in times uh, we got epic wink uh third lap and dollar store easy also uh third lap completed so these folks uh will be keeping an eye out yeah it looks like that shuttle is indeed working so we'll get Drapner back into the race asap one thing i did want to mention is we are now seeing the difference between something like the p72 archimedes and the 350r in the AX2, where the 350R just does not need to refuel, basically, for the entire race. So Maverick has pushed all the way up to second place position after having, you know, obviously some much slower laps because the vehicle just can't push as much. But not having to do those refuels, it's pushed them up a little bit more. So they are now very, very close to Diplomat. Diplomat still with eight laps completed, leading the AX2 at the moment. And then as we move on to the AX3, we're still seeing Smithy Pie, six laps completed. Last lap was completed about six minutes ago, so we might be seeing a refueling from them as well, as well as some of the other uh, AX3s. Yeah, and uh, to get in a report from Euro Trucker saying it appears all the Heralds just drove into yep. the pits. So uh, those folks in the Heralds reaching that end of fuel capacity. Uh, we do have reports. Uh, we've got five hangers out of commission, hangers one, four, seven, eight, and 21. So we'll need to see how these folks uh, manage that getting into appropriate working hangers and there's uh, there's gonna be a queue for working hangers up here uh unless you've got backup ships that you can quickly claim pull back out so uh, we'll see how racers manage that yep 100 percent here we go another comment so one four seven eight and 21 are appearing as non-functional now we're about halfway through the race so uh, that's okay it depends really on how many people have to go into the hangars all at once but if you need to refuel if i reckon at this stage if you're at like half fuel i'd be going now i wouldn't be risking it i'd be making sure i can get my refueling in before the second half of the race even if i lose a couple of laps i'm probably am going to regain those by just being able to to, to finish off the race um but we were lucky yesterday we were lucky last week that everyone was one way or the other for the most part be able to refuel or able to get a new ship out uh without it costing them an insane amount of time and these guys yeah. will have plans i guarantee you and you bring up a good point about the fuel capacity on that 350r uh with the acrux it is the heralds only so everyone's got mm -hmm. the same fuel capacity to work through uh on the ax2 you've got the archimedes you've got the 350r uh is the m50 in there as well uh, yes, indeed. So yep. you're going to be balancing out those different fuel capacities. We saw that in the open class yesterday. Uh, we had a car to all, uh, it, and during our qualifiers, that car to all went 58 minutes without a refuel, uh, making up a lot of time versus the banner defenders. But uh, unfortunately, they they didn't quite make it to a full hour. They did crash out of fuel right with a uh, two minutes left. So. Yeah, um, and we did just see, just then as I came towards this camera, it looks like Tint is back on the field. So I assume we're going to see these Heralds start to get their 10th lap underway, uh, which is going to be interesting. We don't know where everyone's going to be positioned. We just saw Splen go through. Obviously, Shaknu is not right next to Splen anymore. So it, th this refuel has definitely changed up the field in Saycrox Division. But these top four players are still insanely neck and neck as it is. So we'll see what happens. I am excited for this one a lot. It's been a really good fight to watch there. Going back to the AX2 division, we've seen Bill Boy complete their eighth lap. So they are now just barely ahead of the 350R, but they may have to refuel one more time before the end of the race. And they are about 15 seconds behind Diplomat. So they have closed that gap a little bit. I don't know if you remember... Uh, a couple of laps ago, they were about 30 to 40 seconds behind. So th there has been a little bit of a change there. Close and it's definitely back, yeah. their race to win. Yeah. And of course, Diplomat at nine laps. Uh, Bill, Boy, or Bill Boy at eight laps. Uh, Canadian Maverick coming in third for the X2 with eight laps completed. And it looks like Canadian Maverick uh, did hit something on the way to the pits. And he is dead. So yeah. we'll keep an eye out. Canadian Maverick, who is currently in third place with 350 hard in the X2. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's going to be a rough one. Now, knowing Canadian Maverick, though, 
He's probably got like seven different 350Rs in his hangar, so hopefully there shouldn't be too much of an issue of them getting back in. Uh, and they were fairly solidly third place in the AX2. The, the next person after them was about a minute and a half behind, so as long as they don't waste too much time and they're able to regain that time, once again, they're not going to have to refuel, they're going to be in a pretty good spot. Yeah, and you know, a lot of these racers are going to have backups and redundancies on their ships because this does matter. There is a huge prize pool available, and that is split between Acrux, AX2, and AX3. Uh, first, second, and third places, uh, each getting a prize, and you go in with teams, each member of the team gets that prize. So, yeah. some fantastic options. These are both provided by the community here. Uh, we've got uh, Gentleman Jez, Echo Bit. Uh, we also have some CIG sponsor prizes uh, in that mix, and uh, it is quite a, an impressive lineup of, uh, of prizes for those placements. Yeah. Um, so some updates on this big cluster we've got right at the front with uh, all, all of these amazing races. It looks like after that pit stop, Data Machine is now currently in the lead with a th uh, finishing their most recent lap, their 10th lap, at 35 minutes and 15 seconds, followed very closely behind by Shacknu at 35 minutes and 18 seconds. It looks like Tint has lost a fair chunk of that lead. They uh, completed their most recent lap in 36 minutes and 9 seconds, so about 45, 50 seconds behind uh, uh, second position, and Splen about 20 more seconds, or 15, 20 more seconds behind yeah. that. So and you um, see the it has spread out times. a lot more. Yeah, you see the last lap times at 5.47, 5.55 for Data Machine and Shaq New, 7.02 and 7.10 for Tint and Splend. So obviously we're running into issues at the hangar. Uh, Data Machine uh, and uh, Pub Princess both had a collision. Uh, ships were dis uh, destroyed. Uh, Data Machine, actually, I think, uh, is still going, but Pub Princess uh, suffering a, a destruction there. Uh, yeah, it's, it's quite unfortunate. It is a bit rough. Luckily, we do have things in place. If we do have races that are, uh, you know, particularly not careful, and and we have like these repeat offenses, there is there is uh, things in place. So that uh, the data machine will have to definitely be a lot more careful over the remainder of this race. We've only got about twenty three minutes left. Yeah, and yeah, that that timing difference there, uh, two minutes, uh, actually just over a minute, fifteen seconds. Uh, difference between those racers so uh, the ones that are able to get into and uh, quickly pull a backup vehicle potentially when a uh, when a hangar is not working um we see on the ax2 uh tipple mass still up there uh yep. we've got shack new fan club from billboy at number two dirk uh number three and ninjetti uh number four and uh some some impressive times looking there uh, a little bit of a about a minute gap between first and fourth place there that we will keep an eye out for yeah, and in the AX3, oh, sorry, it just reloaded. Everything's fine. Uh, in the AX3, um, we we do see, you know, uh, Smithy and, and Neo Jet are well in the lead of that division. Smithy completed their seventh lap at the 32:21 mark. Neo Jet completing his seventh lap at the 34:52, and then all the way down to X Prime, who completed their sixth lap at the 31-15 mark. So there's there's a big, big difference between first, second, and third in, in the uh, AX3. So a lot of action happening in the middle there. We've seen a lot of collisions from some of the members of the AX3, which is why we'll be seeing that. Uh, but uh, yeah, definitely a big, big race between Neojet and Smithy. Once again, it's going to depend on refueling for these guys. And we just saw notice Hangar 2 is now non-functional. We've got Hangars 1, 2, 4, 7, 8, and 21 that are non-functional. We'll need to keep an eye out for that. Uh, and we did see Shacknew actually take the lead, completing the long flap uh, 38-27 versus 38-34. So seven seconds between Shacknew and Data Machine uh, as they're able to get that clean little run. We have not seen, looks like Splen just finished uh, lap number 11. Yeah, so and then seven yeah. seconds. Yeah, so after Data Machine, we've got Tint, who is about 40, 40 seconds or so uh, behind Data Machine, whereas Splen and Tint are a little bit closer. They're about 20 seconds behind each other. So like I said, that big pit stop definitely changed a lot of things there. Um, but Data Machine has been having really, really consistent fast laps, which has been awesome to see. Uh, and then Shacknu in this second half of the race already absolutely showing what they can do really really consistent sub 310s so if they can keep that yeah. up and they don't have to deal with any more refueling things it's gonna work yeah and we are just crossing over 40 minutes completed 19 and a half minutes left on this race uh all of our racers completing at least five laps even with the collisions uh but uh the top of the pack there at the acrux they're completing their 11th lap uh we see the ax2s in the 10 
uh, 10 lap range, and AX3s have completed seven laps. Uh, we got Smippy Pie, Neo Jet, and uh, Drift ACR in the AX3 class, uh, hitting uh, seventh and eighth laps. Yeah, also, uh, we, we came to this view again just earlier, but yep, Mr. Drive Knight is back on the field, uh, has completed, yep, seven laps in the AX3, even after that ship destruction has still been able to complete seven laps, right? So hasn't actually fallen down too far at all, still well within that AX3 range. It does look like oh. Diplomat, oh, they have fell, fell through, through the, the floor. floor of the hangar. <laughs> oh, oh no. Diplomat currently leading the AX2, falling through the floor of the hangar? Yeah. That is, uh, yeah, you got alpha. I'm sorry. <laughs> Uh, well, that's going to be great news for Bill Boy. They're going to be very, very excited about that. But it also means the diplomat have to go in, had to go there for a refueling, presumably. So Bill Boy might have to uh, suffer the same fate there. But they were about a minute and a half, uh, almost two minutes uh, behind each other, Bill Boy and diplomat. So uh, there's a little bit of room that they can make up there while diplomats, you know, rushing back to get a new vehicle. Um, yeah. And not to be left out, Dirk coming in about a minute behind Bill Boy, also with the Archimedes. Uh, we'll we'll see how far these guys can get with the current fuel, and uh, of course, yeah, the the missile and Ninjetti energy all coming in. We get this uh, finish line cam. Thanks from Echo Bit. Yeah, um, back in the front of the pack, D uh, Data Machine has absolutely crushed their previous lap and used everything to their advantage. They gained about thirty seconds total on Shack News, so they are now. Uh, about 16 seconds ahead of Shaq Nu, so they've taken that first place. Shaq Nu has also completed lap number 12 at 41 minutes and 58 seconds. So we should see Tint and Splen. Oh, there we go. Tint just crossed the finish line uh, uh, with a 3 minute and 7 second lap time. Very, very quick lap time. Let's get that time back. Oh, no. And Splen, Splen destroyed at Milford platform. Uh, oh. the third or second platform on the left side. So there is debris uh, at Milford. Uh, now, is that uh, Splen leaving Debris, or did he collide with Debris that was existing there? Uh, as we get through, we're 40 minutes into this race, there's going to be some Debris left behind. Uh, the the support crew uh, has tried to clear up as much of that as possible, but no. it is possible things have left behind. And uh, maybe a good time to call out and uh, show us some recognition for the support team who is providing us not only with the platforms, uh, those finish line cams running all the timing and you see from gentleman jazz all the director announcements so uh Karansi and i we are the stream team uh we have captain raper numinos uh troster with uh, track cameras uh we do have racer perspectives there uh we have uh gentleman jazz is our race director uh echo bit and agt madcat are our official race timers uh the spaceport officer is steel shift uh the rejoin entry is hbc valeru 01 uh, we don't have anybody on the Providence platform uh, that's been assigned, but uh, we do also have uh, a couple of additional backups. Uh, Segelian is managing the Shimura platform. We do see Splen at Milford. Uh, Splen confirmed collision with debris, uh, so racers have been notified there. Unfortunately, uh, crash was existing a mess. Uh, the Milford officer and safety ship is Euro Trucker, and we've got backups of Longcaster, T Pile, and Algorand. Yeah, it's an awesome team, and it's uh, it's been awesome to work with everyone. Um, so yeah, another thing, Hangar 3 is now down, skis. We're down another Hangar. Now, luckily, I think that's about 15 minutes since we've had a Hangar confirmed as non-functional. So, you know, second half of the race, not doing too bad. Um, I do want to talk a little bit on what happened with Splend there. The amount of time it's going to take them to get their ship ready, uh, it's going to be a bit rough for them to try to get back into that top three position. Unless some absolutely terrible things happen to Data, Shaq, Noor, Tint, I think Splend, unfortunately, may be out of uh, podium for the moment. Although I will just double check because I keep forgetting who's on what team. Uh <laughs> yeah. Who's on first, Kronzi? Who Kronzi. is on first? Because I, it is possible... That we have wow. two members on the same team here. I just need to two double check. 52 seconds. Fastest lap from Shaq New and Herald. Is that a reporting error? Uh, or do I, we have a legit two? Ooh, I, it could be real. It could very well be real. That um, is a full 10 seconds better than what Data Machine has put in for his fastest lap that came in a lap two. Uh, yeah. Shaq New coming with 252. You've got to really manage your boost. And that's that's one of those fuel consumption problems. Is Shaq New, uh, has he got the secret sauce? I mean, maybe. If they are, in fact, ahead, uh, that was an absolutely insane lap. That is, 
Yeah, like like 16 seconds better than what we've seen today, oh, really, right? And that is crucial. He put in two seconds uh, ahead of Data Machine, who came in second place. He tracked in at 44 minutes, 50 seconds, with Data Machine at 44.52. Very, very close there, but that that's an amazing lap time. Yeah, I'm trying to see if I can catch them on, on the camera and see where they're positioned. Uh, Hangar 1 is appearing as functional again. Fantastic. We lose one, we get one back. We'll take it. Yeah, we got 2, 3, 4, 7, 8, and 21 all reported now as non-functional, but uh, Hangar 1 working? Maybe, maybe we'll see. Uh, we are going to see some additional, that second pit stop for those who want to go in now. We got, you know, 13, 14 minutes left. If you refuel now, you're probably going to end, uh, you're going to complete through the end of the race. So it uh, might be a good opportunity. We'll have to see how these racers strategize that. Yeah, very much so. Um... Yeah, so we should be seeing in probably about a minute's time. Uh, I'll, I'll keep watching these perspectives because I really want to see what's going on with Shaknu and Data Machine. There's been a lot of back and forth the last couple of laps. We may have seen, uh, it, it, assuming it's not a recording error, we may have seen the fastest lap we've ever seen uh, uh, on the Crux Cup with that 2 minute 52 seconds, which is just unbelievably fast. Um oh. So yeah, we'll, we'll see what happens there. They should be coming across pretty soon. As you can see here, we can see Playing Fox come across. We can see Quelsar and Pub Princess. And chat, if you have a particular racer in mind that you want to know how are they doing in the race, because uh, there's 30 races for us to try to, to, try to talk about, let us know yeah. and we can give you some updates. Yeah, there's a lot of names to get out there. I mean, we we've been talking about the top of the pack, but we don't want to we don't want to forget. We've got Bill Boy, we've got Dirk, we've got Ninjetti, Energy, Diplomat, Playing Fox, Atrix, Fedical, Noble CIG uh, with the AX2 class in the 350R, uh, coming in 13th uh, overall, 8th place in the AX2, uh, putting in some great times, 10 laps completed. Uh, we've got quite a list there, uh, great racers. Uh, the, the, we're just, I mean, it, this is an exciting time, right? We, we see record times from the uh, Acrux. Uh, we're also seeing uh, some great times put together from the AX2, AX3 divisions, and we're going to watch uh, throughout the rest of this race. We've got just over 12 minutes left. So, And there we go. We can see. So we don't have Markov, but thankfully, Echo Bit was targeting Shaknu there. Shaknu only barely ahead of Data Machine still. So I do think that that time that we got last lap was true because that was the amount of time that yeah. they needed to, to get ahead there. So we have these big, big fights happening between Shaknu and Data Machine, and that's probably going to continue. We're 48 minutes in. We're probably only going to see maybe three, possibly four, maybe five, depending on how the checkered flag works out today, uh, laps left for the day for these for these Acrox divisions. We, this is have, so close. <laughs> I know. We, we've seen Tint fall behind, who was previously in the lead. Uh, with a previous best, how did Shaq New get the 252? That was yeah. amazing. Uh, that was critical to getting in there, and we just see Tint cross the finish line. Unfortunately, Slen, uh, Slen from the uh, the fourth place in the A Crux, still yep. working on getting back in. Uh, this is uh, unfortunately a, a crucial collision with some debris on the track there. Yeah, it's a bit rough. It's the way that it works sometimes. Luckily, as as we've mentioned a lot over the course of the last two days, and any time we have a feeling that there is any amount of debris anywhere we try to get it out of the way and we make sure that we tell all the competitors hey there's debris second strut milford whatever it might be right so you love yeah. seeing that that herald come in they turn that thing sideways and i gotta say the the herald it is a glorified tin can with a rocket strapped at the back it, it is yep. a fantastically <laughs> fast ship you know it's lovely and, uh, to see yeah great perspectives here we saw you dollar store easy coming up on the finish line cam. Uh, a couple other folks uh, running the uh, running the loop behind. Ooh, we uh, ended at Noble CIG. We got Red Wolfwood uh, with the Herald uh, sixth place overall in the Acrox division. Ten laps completed. Strazik with ten laps completed. Also, uh, the Missile uh, with the AX2 uh, running an M50, nine laps completed. Aondo with the P72, nine laps completed. Uh, tenth place in the AX2, seventeenth overall. Canadian Maverick, who had a collision early, uh, 350R in the AX2, nine laps completed, so a uh, respectable position there. And uh, just actually moving up to 16th place total, just completed the 10th lap. Uh, we have Scuttled uh, with AX2, P72, uh, getting nine laps. Sanji Sama, a couple of collisions already, but Sanji Sama, 13th place in the AX2, 20th overall, nine laps completed, uh, checking in at 49 minutes. 
Mr. Dreipner, uh, first first in the Razor LX AX3 class. Uh, Dreipner, uh, nine laps completed at 50 minutes and 15 seconds. Quelsar yeah. just crashed, uh, destroyed at the Milford platform. No debris noted there. So. Yeah. One thing I want to mention, I was talking about, you know, this fight between Billboy and Diplomat for the, the head of the AX2. It looks like Playing Fox has gotten back up into that podium sort of position, but Diplomat and Billboy have really been going back and forth. Their refueling was at different times. We were kind of a little bit confused about what would happen there, but they are both back on the track around the same sort of sp uh, point. Uh, Billboy was able to finish their 12th lap about 10 seconds faster than Diplomat. So, I mean, we've seen diplomat today get some absolutely insane race uh lap times uh and so you know if you can get that 10 seconds faster within the next 10 minutes that's what you're up for that's what you're looking for so yeah. um that's one to watch out for but playing fox definitely got to be happy that th they've got two members of the team <laughs> right now in the top three yeah and uh we did just see a report hangar nine is now functional we're up to it looks like seven of the hangers uh not working properly yep oh what a time oh, to watch that noble cig <laughs> with the collision you've got to watch out for these uh the, those slight uh obstructions there yep. uh, little uh little cranes yeah, and little, stuff yeah. yeah gazebos and stuff that are just anchored into that platform noble making a fantastic spectacle for us to witness uh, representing CIG, uh, obviously, uh, an unfortunate collision, but hopefully be able to recover. We are seeing here now uh, we're just below 50% fuel. Uh, what uh, what perspective we're looking for right here? Uh, so this is Mr. Dreipner. So we've got about eight minutes before we count the, the white flag, which is the start of the end, basically. So the race will probably go until about the hour and five minute mark, hour and seven minute mark today. Um, uh, so I... Don't think Mr. Dreipner is going to have to refuel for the rest of the race, so they can just try and get as many laps in as possible and try to hold on to that lead. Yeah. Um, another the, update uh, with the Shaq New and Data Machine. So they have completed their 14th lap. We're going to be seeing probably their 15th lap any moment now, but they're only three seconds behind each other. So still and, right on top of each other. And with rounding errors, that's that's like two and a half. It is, yeah. it is a fantastically close competition between the two of them. We do see just now Tint. Uh, coming in for that tent coming in last lap he checked in about 38 seconds behind we're gonna see uh, what the official timing is here with tent uh we see lap number 15 for tent actually. yeah yeah so that was a four minute 34 lap so what i think might have happened is this last lap was probably a a refuel lap for the for the heralds um and you know it probably took tent maybe just got a little bit lucky was able to do it within a minute you know, get right back into the race and absolutely floor it. So at the moment, Tint is back ahead. Tint is in first place position at the moment. If they did in fact refuel last lap, that should be it. They shouldn't have to refuel for the rest of the race. We've only got a little over six minutes left. We also have just seen Fedekal had a ship destroyed, unfortunately, in Providence. Um, so a yeah. bit of a shame there to have that happen so late in the race. It is fifth unlikely that they'll the be able to Yeah, fifth place in the Acrox currently with 12 laps completed for Fedekal. Uh, we'll have to see if they can get back in. With six minutes left to race, it could be possible to get back in, get one or two laps uh, after that white flag is called, but uh, we'll need to keep an eye out there. Look at this lineup of yep. racers <laughs> as they come through that platform. Uh, we got Dollar Store Easy, Atrix, Energy, Red Wolfwood, Drift ACR, and The Missile all uh, making their approach. And you see a couple of folks, the markers, seemingly uh, uh, overtaking each other mm -hmm. uh, during that platform, so... Yeah, uh, we, we've mentioned it a couple of times when you come back into the into the back of Kaplan, because we have the new 318 race uh, of Kaplan Stadium, there's a little bit of extra uh, obstacles that you've got to get around. They've put additional struts. Yeah. They've really uh, gone out of their way to, to make it a, an interesting track for that Kaplan circuit. But uh, it does add a level of difficulty coming into that Kaplan platform uh, that racers have to watch out for. Yeah, very much uh, so. If you do see the racer perspectives, you'll notice they are doing an active ping that creates that virtual highlight of the uh, obstructions ahead. Yep, there you go. Just to, just as you do that, uh, this is one way that uh, you can get a little bit of visibility. These these have uh, low struts, uh, low clearances that you've really got to watch out for because uh, you, you can crash very easily. And uh, anybody who's done the Kaplan circuit uh, knows this is a very tight track. Uh, with a lot of uh, narrow clearances. So uh, these racers for an hour are flying through these mail slots. Yeah. Got to be, got to be practiced at it. Yeah.
So I can confirm Data Machine has completed lap number 15 as well. Roughly a minute and 15, 20 seconds uh, slower than Tint. So uh, they, they do have a lot of time to make up there. We don't know how Tint's fuel situation is. Like I said, I think that they refueled, but I'm not 100% sure. I'm almost definitely sure that Data Machine did refuel though, because that was a six minute and 35 second uh, lap time for that one. So Data Machine should be ready to go and finish this race. Still waiting to see what's happening with Shaq New. We know that Splen is back out on the field, managed to finish their 13th lap at the 53 minute mark. So we actually should see uh, them coming up with a lap in about 30, uh, 40 seconds or so. Um, for lots of action happening. In big difference in the last lap time four minutes 34 yeah. uh, compared to a standard lap of about three minutes five seconds tint obviously getting a very effective quick refueling uh versus data machine potentially running into issues taking an extra two minutes which is critical uh, yeah. critical on this uh we just saw tint cross the finish line for his 16th lap uh top place overall we're at 56 19 check in for him we'll have to see how data machine uh shack new and splen come in uh, do you see splen uh, completing lap number 13 at 53 minutes. So due to come in in just a couple of minutes here. Yeah. And you see Splen come in with lap number four at 56.42. So a little bit behind, uh, 14 laps. Uh, Got to make up some of that. And hope you know, we'll see how he compares with Shaq New. Uh, that, yeah. uh, Shaq New has not checked in for lap 15 yet. Yeah, it's been about 10 minutes since we've seen Shaq New uh, go in for a lap. So probably have seen some, some issues refueling, which has been unfortunate. Um, uh, what I do want to say, though, is that, you know, we're at the 57-minute mark. Tint had crossed over about a minute ago. So we're probably going to see two laps for before the white flag is called. Um, and then that's going to be basically the start of the end. Everyone finish your current lap. That's going to be it. So uh, yeah. at the moment, Tint is way out ahead. There is still the possibility that Data Machine could get ahead. And if Tint has an accident, you know, that white flag will get called a little bit later. So there's still opportunities for people to come in through that way. Um, but this, the Acrox division has been an absolute treat to watch today, as has yeah. the AX2. Billboy completing their 14th lap only uh, seconds ago, about eight seconds ago or so, uh, just ahead of Diplomat. Diplomat still waiting to complete that lap. Um, I'm hoping that we're going to see him come across pretty soon because that race yeah. has been quite close as well. And the terrible misfortune of Diplomat falling through the hangar floor during mm -hmm. refueling, uh, costly mistake there, puts him from first place into second behind Billboy. And then we have Playing Fox coming in uh, just behind those. Uh, Playing Fox at 13 laps. It uh, looks like Diplomat did have a check-in at 57.59, so just a few seconds ago. Uh, complete lap number 14. Uh, these folks are about 20 seconds between first and second on the AX2 class. And uh, we'll see as uh, Playing Fox uh, moves in. The AX3 class, uh, as we look back here, uh, we've got Mr. Dreipner, uh with the Razor LX uh, coming in with 10 laps completed, last check-in at 55 minutes. Uh, 4 minutes, 42 seconds on the, so we'll we'll potentially see a check-in at about the 59, uh, almost uh, right at the one-hour mark. Uh, Smithy Pie with the uh, Omega uh, coming in second place for the AX3, uh, checking in at 55.13. Uh, these are both on their 10th lap. Uh, Zollner uh, with uh, Razor LX, uh, additional 10th lap there. All of these folks, 5508, 5513, 5519, yep. we're about 10 seconds apart on that AX3 class. It's going to be very competitive. Yep, and we are in the last minute before we will see probably a white flag get called. So not too long now, guys. People are going to start finishing their last couple of laps. Let's hear some noise for your favorite races. Are you a fan of Tint? Do you think Data Machine is going to make up that time? Are you a fan of of the Shaq New fan club. We're a part of the Shaq New fan club. There you go. There is our white flag. So it's going to uh, going to end any moment now. Basically, it's going to be another couple of minutes. Uh, but it's going to be hard for any of these positions to change now. We're just seeing a couple of fights in the middle uh, and, and see how they finish before the end of the race. We do see Splen coming in there. Tent completing 17th lap. Splen looking at uh, completing the 15th lap. Uh, a little bit behind Shaq New, uh, who checked in at 58.24. So uh, we'll see, potentially, uh, uh, this might be the way that the Acrux division sets off mm. uh, with Tint, Data Machine, and Shaq New. Uh, of course, that collision from Splen at Milford Tunnel uh, with some debris, putting him out of podium position. Uh, we've got AX2, uh, Billboy, Diplomat, and Playing Fox that are current top uh, one, two, and three. And then the AX3, Smithy Pie, uh, Mr. Dreipner, and Zollner, uh, first, second, and third place. We'll see if those hold uh, through this white flag lap, and then they will call the checkered flag as uh, Tint completes 
10, checked in at 59.26. So we'll see you at uh, one hour, uh, about two minutes uh, with that uh, final checker flag call. Yeah, definitely. So, yeah, so we're looking at right at the moment. Tint, Data Machine, and Shackner are looking like they're likely to get first, second, and third place in the Acrox. In the AX2 division, it looks at the moment like we're going to see Billboy, Diplomat, and Playing Fox in the top three. And then in the X, uh, the AX3, we are likely to see at the moment a on, uh, sorry, not a Yondo, Smithy Pie. Uh, Mr. Dreipner and Zolna. Um, all of these guys have really, really solid days today. Some of the races, you know, they've been a bit more unfortunate. One thing I do want to talk about is that Dollar Store Easy was able to get a three minutes and 50 seconds today, uh, which, you know, they, they struggled a little bit last week during qualifiers to to get some really, really solid times, but they managed to to get uh, get some get some pretty solid times today, which is awesome to see. Um, and some also some, some shout outs to some members of the AX3, uh, to Pub Princess. You've had some absolutely fantastic laps that four minute 30, 46. That's awesome. Uh, Quelsa uh, from Team Cursus with that 4 minute 32 in the Razor LX. Uh, yeah, we're seeing some really awesome performances today as we start to close this one out. Um, Data Machine completing their 17th lap just after the 1 minute mark. Uh, yeah, it looks like it's, it's about to get locked in. Yeah, definitely looking forward to the completion of this uh, final lap. As all of these folks, you see people checking in. We got Noble CIG, Princess, uh, Pub Princess, Scuttled. Uh, Atrix, uh, all those names coming through, getting those uh, getting those times turned in, and uh, great showing from everybody today, uh, despite the technical issues. Yeah, definitely. It was a really, really solid job. So thank you, everyone, for your attempts. Now, we're probably about 25 seconds away from the checkered flag being run. We can see Tint coming around the lip there towards Kaplan Stadium. The second that they cross past Echo Bit, that will be checkered flag, and people will be finishing their laps Let's give a big round of applause as he starts crossing the line. Two tints. Congratulations. An absolute amazing Coming job in. today. And there oh, we go. beautiful. Lap number there 18. One hour, two minutes, 34 seconds. Tint is your official winner of the A Crux division of the Crux Cup and the Crux Cup as a whole. Absolutely massive. Congratulations. Well done, mate. 18 laps completed. Best lap of three minutes, five seconds. Uh, most recent lap of three minutes seven seconds and of course having a great pro great uh a great refueling a uh, couple of runs there uh not too many issues and uh of course a clean run we did see splen uh coming in with fourth place we've got uh, data machine in second shack new in third so these racers all uh completing their times and yeah we'll we'll see hopefully we'll have data machine and shack new uh completing their lap uh number 18 and 17 respectively yeah, there are there are theoretically some things that could still happen in in the list as we get these races to finish their laps. But assuming there's no more collisions, assuming there's no more explosions, uh, this is what we're looking at today. Um, so yeah, this has been an absolutely amazing weekend for racing. Um, two things: one, my feet hurt. Two, <laughs> um, I would love to do this again if we can get. You know, Atmo and XGR and Crux Cup and everyone to just go, all right, this weekend's race weekend. Let's let's get it done, guys. Let's do yeah, it. You've, right? you've been doing quite a quite a bit of uh, racing and uh, participation commentary. Uh, this is actually my first time doing official race commentary, and I, I really appreciated it. I've come in uh, with a 317 317.1. Uh, with the Snake Pit, we we put together a, an event uh, with Saber Raven Owners Club. That's what got me into racing, and I got to say, running that Snake Pit was phenomenal. I've I've been uh, falling in love with the tracks that CIG has put together with 318, the official racing profile. Everybody, if you haven't gone out there, Lorville Outskirts, it's your first track. It's an exciting event, uh, but yeah, of course, you can go through and look up on CruxCup.com the details for this uh, this race. Uh, you come out of those platforms. It's got the headings and the direction so that you know which way to point your ship uh, when you're running this platform. Uh, we do see uh, Racer, uh, Drifter Racer, and Ninjetti all coming in with their uh, lap completions. Dark, uh, fifth place uh, with the uh, P72 Archimedes. And Epic Wink, 12th place with the P72 Archimedes. Now, Epic Wink had a couple of uh, setbacks early on. Uh, Bill Boy, first place on the P72. So that AX2. Uh, with Bill Boy uh, leading up at 16 laps completed. Uh, fastest lap time, 335, most recent, 339. So, 
yeah, very, very fast. Almost fast enough to be in the Acrox division, which I do love just sort of how close these divisions are to each other. It's not so much that you're going to be a minute and a half behind the best racer. It's a, it's a little bit closer than that, so we love to see that. And there we go. We also have Energy and Diplomat have finished. So Diplomat is going to pick up that second place position in the AX2, winning that prize, having a fantastic day there. Um, we are almost at everyone completed. Only a few people left on the track now. We can see Atrix and Aonda coming through the finish line. Noble CIG, not too far behind them. Thank you very much, Noble, for participating. We love to have CIG at these events, and you've done an absolutely fantastic job today as well. It is absolutely amazing. We got the support from CIG uh, making, uh, making these events official, uh, getting recognition in the newsletters, uh, call outs that yep. are really helping spread the word about these events. And, you know, and again, I think a big round of applause to the folks that are responsible for organizing the Crux Cup. Uh, Echo Bit, Gentleman Jazz, uh, everyone that's been on the support team. Uh, we went through your names earlier, but uh, thank you again for making this uh, a fantastic event, uh, putting on, uh, sponsoring the prizes for these racers. Obviously, uh, great prizes they're going to secure. And uh, we, uh, I, it's it's been a fantastic event overall. Very smooth, despite the fact that you know Friday night servers were. Uh, server was burning down the building it was it was yeah. uh, potential for a red flag on this event uh if things weren't performing but we've been able to get out here for two hours uh everybody raced together and uh fortunately no uh no major issues encountered we did see a lot of hangers go down uh throughout the yeah. night uh hangers one two three four seven eight nine and 21 uh some of them recovering some of them uh you know just uh, sticking in that uh, ain't broke method so yeah, and I'm just happy we were able to get the stream to work nicely with us today. Uh, we figured out a couple of things that we hadn't realized yesterday or during qualifiers, and then everything basically worked. So you know what? It's it's the, we we are, we do this professionally. That's yeah, a hundred percent true. We will a hundred percent forget exactly what the fix was next year, though. I guarantee it. <laughs> yeah. What do you mean we've got the same issue? I mean, I, I haven't heard from Echo Bit about next year yet. Uh, I don't know. Uh, it's 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 really up to me so if you want to impress anyone um, no i will say red it's been absolutely awesome commentating with you these last two weeks yeah. it's been a lot of fun i feel like we mesh pretty well uh for, for commentating and and uh and whatnot um as, as my request to you guys chat uh, you know, comment as, as stasis and commentary is something I've become really excited about. So if you have any suggestions for how, you know, the Crux Cup could improve, how we could improve, l please let us know. Um, if, if you have any direct insults to us, uh, please send them to Red. I, I don't want to see that. It's fine. Yeah. <laughs> Mailbox muted by default. Thank you. Yeah. Um, yeah, uh, the, the racing community here has been fantastic. We see these perspectives as those racers uh, end up back at the uh, Providence platform. And uh, yeah, the spaceport, uh, I, maybe we'll see a, uh, an impromptu ship meet uh, over on the Orison platforms as these racers complete their process and uh, go find someplace fun to land. Yeah, so it looks like we only have two races left to actually finish. So Dripna, I think, still has to go back and get his ship to complete his lap. Also, Jez, thank you for everything you've done in the director's comments uh, today. It's it's very helpful for us and for the viewers to see everything that's going on. We appreciate that a ton. Yeah, uh, there's a lot of behind the scenes that we really don't get to appreciate as the commentators. We've got a limited perspective on these vehicles, but uh, honestly, going through, uh, getting the re re reports on hangers that are non-functional. It really puts perspective on uh, what's going on behind the scenes, some of the challenges that these racers are facing, so those collisions. We've got a limited perspective, and honestly, having that update from you and uh, and the rest of the support team has been fantastic. Yeah, for sure. So, it's not going to be too much longer while we finish. Let's have a quick look. Firstly, I'm going to show you guys the prize wheel once again so we can go through about what our winners are going to receive. And then we should be able to go to the race results because I believe we do have our top three of both sides. It's possible we don't have Mr. Dreipner in just yet. They still may be winning uh, the AX3 if they can get that final lap in. But let's have a quick look at the prizes once again. Right, man. $6,000 total uh, across the six of those classes. Yeah, so we had the Open, the Aurora, and the Heavy Division yesterday. Today was all about the speed, the A-Crux Division. Remember, if you are part of a team, you get two prizes. So if you are first in the A-Crux, both yourself and your teammate get that Hercules M2. Some absolutely massive prizes as part of this event today. 
Yes, indeed. Uh, the AX2 with the 600i, uh, the E1 Spirit, and the C8R, and the AX3 with the 400i, the uh, C1 Spirit, and uh, CR, uh, C8R as well. That code blue plane. Pretty fantastic. Yeah, and then in the open division, we had the Mercury Star Runner, the X1 Velocity, and the STV. So we saw those go away yesterday as well. Um, there were some very ecstatic winners. For the Aurora division, we gave away a Constellation Aquila because it's basically just a big Aurora, the CAR Pisces, and an STV. And lastly, in the heavy division, we had the Starfarers, CNR Pisces, and the Cutter. So some absolutely amazing prizes given out. So thank you very much to all the members of the ANZIA Alliance that gave some prizes. Echo Bit, Algorad, Jez. I'm definitely missing names, but they'll definitely shown at the front there, as well as CIG uh, for helping with some of those prizes too. As far as I'm aware, the largest amount of prizes in a Star Citizen event ever. We... We have not seen uh, that level of prize pool uh, with uh, you know other events. It's it's phenomenal the amount of support and honestly, you're talking about six classes, two racers per team, uh, first, second, and third place. That's that's 36 prizes that have been distributed, uh, earned, and uh, I would say hard fought yeah. <laughs> uh, to get those awards. Very much so. All right, let's start looking at the race results as we have our last two races coming through. First off. From Frontier Consolidated, we're going to see Tint and Fedicol win that first prize. Congratulations there, Tint. Some absolutely fantastic racing. I did think this was the case that we had two members in the top three that were part of the same team. So Data Machine and Shaknu actually crewed up there. So they together win that second prize, which means Splen still barely manages to get that podium position, pick up a prize for himself and Dollar Store Easy. So absolutely fantastic job there, Splen, able to stay on there. Red Wolf and Strazik, you guys had an amazing performance today. Well done. Um, yeah, that is your Acrux winners. Let's move on to the Acrux 2. So for the AX2, yeah. like I said, Bill Boy and Playing Fox were part of the same team and they've been doing some absolutely fantastic performances. Bill Boy was able to uh, pick up... Sorry, I thought Diplomat picked up first, first place. place. Yeah, uh, I appear to be wrong. It does look like Bill Boy. Yeah, yeah, it does little, look like Bill Boy picked up first there. place. Little, little shuffle there as folks yeah. uh, complete their final lap. Uh, so Diplomat and Iando in uh, second place with the Far Out Racing, and uh, third place Ninjetti and Energy with the P3 Racing uh, dropping in there. Uh, we've got Rocket Boys with Dirk and Scuttled in fourth. Uh, Ghost Corp with Atrix uh, in fifth place. Team SCA Spicy Meatballs with Canadian Maverick and Epic Wing coming in sixth. And of course, uh, seventh place, Blue Star IT with the missile. Yeah, absolutely fantastic job from you guys. That was really, that, that was, the, the, the Acrux was really fun to watch that front section, but the fight between Billboy and Diplomat that entire race was awesome. Moving towards a lot the of dynamic events. Yeah. Uh, we also have, of course, Noble CIG and Sanji Sama picking up at the end there of the AX2. Sanji unfortunately had a bunch of collisions and, and wasn't able to to uh, show just how fast of a racer they are today. But we am sure we'll see them next time. And Noble, once again, thank you very much for participating today. It was awesome to see uh, CIG hop in. Next week, uh, next year, you've got to win it though. If you don't win it, we will be permanently banning you from the event. <laughs> Yes, indeed. And coming up with the AX3, we've got Omega Aero Sports with Smithy Pi taking up the first. Uh, Mr. Drivener uh, with Team I Hope uh, coming in second. And T Girls Gaming with Zolner and Pub Princess uh, securing the third spot on that podium. Prevail Gaming with Drift Racer on fourth, uh, fifth place. The Team Merc Corp Racing Team uh, with X Prime. Sire Alpha with Neo Jet uh, representing sixth place. And seventh place, Team Curses with Quelsar. Uh, coming in at the uh, the last of that AX3 group. Yeah, I will say, with the AX3, uh, it is possible, we'll, we'll double check and we'll wait for confirmation, but it is possible that uh, Dreipner will be allowed to complete his final lap. Um, so we may see a change there uh, in, in the AX3. Um, so there we go. Some absolutely fantastic races today, guys, and some absolutely fantastic shots from all of our races. We're already seeing them getting ready to uh, to set up a photo. And yeah, we can see. So we do still have Dreipner and X Prime. Uh, still going to complete their final lap. So we do expect that Dreipner will be first place uh, just ahead of uh, Smithy Pie. Uh, actually, no, will still be below Smithy Pie because they will complete their 12th lap uh, slower. But they will still be in the yeah. second place, I believe. All right. And uh, yeah, uh, one of these, uh, just kind of the impromptu get together, one gets the photo afterwards. It's great to see these racers. I mean, we, it's been a, a tough competition. 
But uh, the fact that they're able to come back together, uh, have a quick photo op, uh, just the lingering and the excitement that happens at the end of the race uh, when everybody's done, uh, they put in their times and just the respect between racers uh, to say, you know, we, we had a fantastic event. And yeah, look at this. <laughs> Everybody getting lined up. I will say uh, it, it is very underestimated uh, the ability to herd cats effectively. Uh, yeah. <laughs> it, 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 it can seem like that. that I, I always joke that Star Citizen has the one hour rule. If you want to do anything with a group, it's going to take you one hour to get set up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, <laughs> it, it, a good organization like these racers have done a fantastic job. Uh, Echo Bit brought them in. We had the uh, race briefings, formation laps, and uh, helped deliver all of that. Yeah. Um, so I don't think we're going to be able to get any uh, post-race interviews at the moment just because of the way that we've got everything set up. But what I will try to get for you guys, I'm going to talk to Echo Bit to uh, hopefully try to make some more Crux Cup related content and maybe get some interviews during the week, chuck them up on YouTube, see how the racers felt about the race, what they might want to see in future, as well as... This isn't really an announcement because Echobit hasn't told me a date, but this is not the only race that the Crux Cup team run. There is also the Scarlet Apex, which is my personal favorite race. We did it for the first time oh. last year, and it was so cool. I am in love with this idea. Now, it is uh, just outside of Grim Hex. Uh, there's an asteroid uh, that uh, you're running loops around. Uh, it is a distortions only, and you can go disable your opponents. So ships, uh, I know especially the new entry from the RSI Antares with its EMP device, uh, the Saber Raven, a uh, personal favorite of mine, uh, one of those exclusive ships, uh, the Avenger Warlock. We'll have to see how these EMP ships end up uh, faring in the Scarlet Apex. And uh, yeah, uh, the, I saw the idea last year. Unfortunately, I didn't get involved early enough, but I am, I am so in love with that idea. Uh, a race that you get to disable your opponents, uh, send it to me. Right. Yeah, yeah, it was very entertaining to watch last year. It also had like a lot of elements that we didn't really realize were were very powerful. So, for example, you didn't have to drive solo. We had people in Cutlasses, we had people in Scorpiuses at the time. Mm -hmm. um, it was a lot, a lot of fun. One of my favorite things that we realized is just how powerful the Cutlass is in space maneuvering when it's in VTOL mode. It is a lot of power coming out of those oh. engines. And so it blasted away the competition. So it was very cool to watch that, see someone in the turret seat actually doing things <laughs> and actually, mm -hmm. you know, disabling ships. So uh, the rules and, and stuff may need to change just because of the way that uh, uh, it works now, but I'm sure the Scarlet Apex will be coming back. Yeah, and it's great to see now the other risk that is going to be happening uh, starting with 318 those EMP devices disable a ship for five minutes. Yeah. So you're going to be powered off. You'll have to work through that whole power cycle and make sure you know how to recover your ship if you're one of those folks that gets disabled. Yeah. couple more words as you can see them trying to take their photo with people in just the best fits I've ever seen in my life. Uh, so firstly, if you do want to support the Crux Cup and you want to support the prizes and, and all that, everyone here is a volunteer. Um, go to exclamation mark merch and go buy some shirts. You can buy this one. It says Ahamai uh, Ring. You can buy that one. It says 2953 Crux Cup or you can buy the Scarlet Apex one. Uh, they're all quite nice shirts. It'd be cool to see some people at CitizenCon this I'm, year wearing them. That'd be very, very cool. They're real comfortable. They're, they're comfortable shirts. So Yeah. Um, and of course... Once again, thank you very much, Echo Bit. Thank you very much, Jez. Thank you, Algared. Thank you, Red Monster. Thank you, everyone who is part of the camera team. Thank you, all of the races, uh, especially. This event is only fun because you guys participate. We had 60 races over the course of the two days, which is absolutely insane, with some really, really incredible race times. Thank you, viewers, for coming and watching and supporting the racing community. We are not the only ones that do this. There's Atmo, there's XGR. I'm sure there's some that aren't in the English language that I don't know about that also do a bunch of racing. So look out there. There is a ton. I don't think there's much more from us. I feel like we've gone over the same couple of things a few times. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Have you got anything else to say, Red? Uh, no, that's it. Great race, everybody. Uh, this was a fantastic <laughs> event. <laughs> you know, we, we've, uh, we've done our best to uh, cover each of the racers, obviously, with 30 racers' names out there. Uh, we, we wanted to make sure everybody got represented at least once. And thank you for those who came, uh, participated, uh, those who were in practices, uh, the, the qualifiers last week. And honestly, uh, an exciting day, uh, some exciting times. Two minutes, 52 seconds. I can't not believe that lap time. And uh, 
yeah, we'll have to see how they did it. And of course, I love the idea of having Echo Bit come through with some after action reports, talking yep. through specific racers, uh, discussing some of the challenges that they faced here. You know, obviously some of them are server based. Some of them are just interaction with other players. We had some collisions and, you know, we'll need to keep an eye out on that. And also timing on the track, uh, whether daytime versus going into the night, uh, if that had any impact. I'd love to hear the racer's perspective. So Echo Bit, you got some work to do. Yeah. All right. Well, I have the green light. That is it from us. I am Cronsy. That is Red Monster SC. We're actually going to go, you know, do a little bit of an after party over at his stream. He's going to be doing mining or something. I don't know. Who cares? But we're going to be heading over there. So uh, please make sure you join us over there, guys. Um, thank you very much for joining. We'll see you again soon. See you, everybody. <laughs>